a bad time. by a massive war between the Galactic Republic and a vast and powerful Sith Empire. Raging on for decades, this great galactic war only came to a halt when the Sith Lord Darth Malgus led a surprise attack on the Republic's capital world, Coruscant. His devastating attack forced the Republic to sign the Treaty of Coruscant, bringing about a period of uneasy peace between these rival factions. And that's where the storylines of Star Wars The Old Republic begin. In the following years, tensions between the Republic and Empire only grew. Despite the Treaty of Coruscant, both factions took every opportunity to undermine each other. The Empire annexed many defenseless worlds and encouraged others to openly reject their affiliation with the Republic, while the Republic resisted their ancient enemies' aggressions as best they could. Jedi and Sith, spies and soldiers, even hired guns, all played their parts in the escalating conflict. After 12 years of tenuous peace, all-out war resumed between the Republic and the Empire. When the Sith Emperor Vitiate was seemingly destroyed by a Jedi, many hoped it would bring a swift end to the hostilities for good. Instead, various splinter factions hoping to fill the vacuum of power multiplied the number of battlefronts. Darth Malgus, long dissatisfied with the political maneuvering and backstabbing of Imperial leadership, led one of these fractured groups in a revolt, hoping to seize control of the Sith Empire. Malgus and his followers were challenged by the Republic and the Empire both, and he was presumed dead when his stolen space station was destroyed. But the damage he inflicted left the Republic at a considerable advantage, signaling a shift in the renewed war. Shortly after the fall of Malgus, the new leader of the Hutt Cartel, Taboro, conquered the neutral planet Makeb as the first step in a bid to expand the power of the Huts across the galaxy. Makeb was home to a resource known as Isotope 5, a tremendously powerful energy source Taboro planned to use to overthrow the Republic and Empire both, establishing the Huts as the galaxy's largest superpower. But Taboro's conquest of Makeb came with a price. His ruthless Isotope 5 mining operations destabilized the planet and set it on a path to total destruction. The Republic raced to evacuate Makeb's citizens, while the Empire sent their own forces to salvage as much Isotope 5 as they could in the chaos. Eventually, the other Hutt Cartel leaders turned against Taboro and offered to assist the Republic with eliminating him. As Taboro's invasion came to an end, the Republic gained a powerful ally in the Hutt Cartel, but the Empire's newly acquired supply of Isotope 5 made up for the shortcomings they had recently suffered. The chaos of Makeb had barely subsided before a new threat emerged. Despite fighting on opposite sides, a Sith Lord named Lana Benico and a Republic spy, Theron Shan, both began to suspect that their superiors were working together for an unknown third party. By pooling their resources and recruiting the help of some powerful new friends, 
Lana and Theron uncovered a conspiracy that was bigger than they could have imagined. The Republic and the Empire had both been infiltrated by a veritable army of cultists, led by the infamous Jedi-turned-Sith known as Revan. Knowing that the Sith Emperor Vitiate was not truly dead, Revan and his followers attempted to force Vitiate back into a physical form they could destroy by fomenting catastrophic battles between the Republic and the Empire. However, once their plan was exposed by Theron and Lana, a coalition of forces from both factions defeated the cultist's plot. But the victory was short-lived. Vitiate's incorporeal form spoke once more after years of silence, empowered by the very attempt to destroy him. The Emperor had returned. Republic and Imperial forces joined together once again after the newly freed Sith Emperor consumed all life on the planet Xyost, killing almost the entirety of the planet's population. A task force led by Darth Mar, a key player during the Revanite Crisis, tracked the Emperor to an uncharted area beyond the known regions of the galaxy, known as Wild Space. Mar's forces had barely begun to explore the region before they were attacked. The assailants, led by Prince Arkin of the Internal Empire, captured Mar and one of his allies and brought them before his father, Emperor Valkorion. Mar immediately recognized Valkorion as the same Emperor who had once ruled the Sith Empire and who had destroyed Xyost. Mar was killed in the ensuing confrontation. While Valkorion attempted to recruit Mar's ally to his cause, he was struck down and seemingly killed. Arkin blamed the ally, whom he called Outlander, for the attack and claimed the throne of the Eternal Empire for himself. The weakened Republic and Sith Empire were powerless against Emperor Arkin's forces and quickly submitted to invasion. Hope was lost until the Outlander escaped Arkin's prison and took command of the Alliance, an organization built from Republic and Imperial forces to shatter the Eternal Empire's grip on the galaxy. All the while, the disembodied Emperor, now known as Valkorion, lived on, speaking within the Alliance commander's mind, attempting to guide their actions and tempt them with promises of his power and wisdom. The Alliance's rebellion was long and difficult. When Arkin was eventually deposed, his sister Valen, who many considered to be even more tyrannical, took the Eternal Throne for herself. Valen's rule, marked by bloodshed and chaos, ended when she attacked the Alliance base on Odessin. After a long battle that cost many lives, the Alliance commander defeated Valen, traveled to the Eternal Empire's homeworld of Zakul, and seized control of the Eternal Throne and what remained of the vast automated fleets it commanded. It was at this pivotal moment that the disembodied Valkorion struck, attempting to seize the commander's body for himself. But the commander's will was stronger than he'd imagined, and the once Emperor of the Sith was seemingly destroyed at last. The Alliance's impressive influence over the galaxy was short-lived. Without a common foe to unite them, tensions between the Republic and the Empire quickly escalated. Meanwhile, a shadowy group known as the Order of Zildrog managed to secretly infiltrate all of the Alliance's systems and communications ultimately destroying the bulk of the Alliance fleet before they were stopped. With a return to war becoming inevitable, the commander was forced to choose a side for the battles to come. The first shot of this renewed conflict was fired on the planet Osis, where Imperial forces were deployed to destroy a hidden colony of Jedi in a preemptive strike. The mission was ultimately led by Darth Malgus, who had narrowly survived his brush with death, and now seemed fully, if suspiciously, loyal to the Empire's new ruler. Is the man who once challenged the Republic and his fellow Sith alike truly returning to the fold as a loyal warrior for the Empire? Or does Malgus still have his own dark agenda? Find out in Legacy of the Sith. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, we wanted to open with this beautiful, like, the story so far of the Old Republic because, you know, number one, we're going to be talking about video games today, a certain one that's recently announced. And number two, a lot of our inspiration for these films really does come from the Old Republic, as well as the expanded universe. So with that said, let me go over a couple of topics that we're going to be covering today. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce the team that I have, the guest panelists uh, that I have here, most of which are part of our wonderful cast. Uh, but all of them are dark siders in one way or another. We also have Chris Altoff with us, so he is my exquisite sound designer. So we're going to talk about the sounds too. Uh, so you know, uh, we'll be talking about Star Wars Outlaws. That's the the the, the real topic uh, at hand, like the newsworthy topic. There's a couple of uh, uh, controversies around Star Wars Outlaws that I want to talk about. One of those being, of course. Uh, 
you know, the, the development of a new genre of video games called open world games. Uh, and the other one being, you know, the, the, the character lead. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Uh, again, we'll really dive into the sounds of the dark side. I mean, some of the most iconic sounds of Star Wars do kind of come from the, the dark side. We have, you know, Dar anybody that's ever listened to Darth Vader's breathing has always had that, like, <gasps> right? <laughs> that that kind of, like, really, uh, it's solidified in memory. Uh, and so from there, we will talk about the villains of Star Wars, why we love them, why we, you know, want to, you know, how we want to create that same kind of feeling and, and build the love of villains uh, in, in our trilogy and, you know, how the cast is going to be doing, you know, what they're going to be doing to help us do that uh, by bringing voices to these characters. And then, of course, we'll talk a little bit about finishing with a grim future. Uh, there's been some discussions in the um, in the channels and in the in DMs and in the comments and stuff like that about why it is that, you know, our, our episode 12 is called The Sith Rise. And it seems like it's going to be a dark future, and it is, <laughs> and it's very appropriate with this uh, this this group of panelists. Uh, from there, we will talk about you know auditions and the casting experience and and how that went for everybody. You know, we had some different uh, uh, differences in how we got there. Some were directly cast onto our 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 film. Others had an entire auditioning process, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, from each of them and then we're going to finish off with some questions and answers for everybody so uh, you know if you have questions we'll turn that that feature on 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 YouTube and you can uh, send in your questions and we will highlight them and and get them uh, get them shown so let me go ahead and start by introducing my team um, so uh, first up is going to be the wonderful Christopher Altoff uh, he is our lead sound designer. Say hi, Chris. Hello. <laughs> and he is part of the amazing Wizards team. I do have two teams, one that's building the uh, TV series, which we call the Hot Shots team. And the team that is building the films are the Wizards team. So he is most definitely a huge part of that. Uh, and, you know, creating those memories and, and those auditory sounds that everybody just, you know, remembers uh, and, and burns it to memory. Um, and then next to him, we have the amazing X-Wing. Hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, there's the voice. <laughs> and uh, he is actually, of course, <laughs> Emperor Vichy. He voices the big bad one half of the big bad uh yeah. in our film he shares that role with my next guest miss sharon grunwald yay <laughs> well i'm the sharon. better half <laughs> absolutely 100 <Truly> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and elian zara is a lesser known canon character but canon nonetheless uh she is uh, a character in a comic book series and she is a diehard imperialist and uh you know she really is a believer in it and uh you know uh really uh believes that uh, that is the way to go uh next to her i'm going to start to introduce here's the big ones right here come the big ones because these are characters that a lot of you are going to recognize and know from the expanded universe okay so the famous Darth Nil, played by Vincent Calamina. Say hi, Vincent. <laughs> uh, and then we have Darth Talon. Hey, 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 how are we doing? Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> how are you? Welcome, guys. Yes. Oh, and, we're uh, going to stick some trouble here. Let's go. <laughs> And so uh, this is our panel for today. These are my dark siders. Um, thank you so much, guys, for being here today. Um, you know, I will uh, definitely have the cast. The cast is going to throw in some uh, some some commands, and some of those uh, those social media uh, properties will come up on the screen for you guys to follow them. Um, so let's get into it. Okay, so like, let's talk a little bit about Star Wars Outlaws, shall we? Mm. Let's. <laughs>
recently announced at IGN's Summer of Gaming 2023 Xbox Showcase, Star Wars Outlaws is coming sometime in 2024. It touts itself as the first ever Star Wars-based open-world game. But is it, though? Haven't we had open worlds in games before? Do we have to play as a girl? All right. Yes. So, yes. Um, recently announced a new Star Wars game. <laughs> Go figure, right? We're getting a lot of them lately. Are we? Yeah. Like, there's a lot. I mean, I don't know if anybody's known this, and this this isn't something that I'm breaking NDAs for or anything like that. But uh, you know, Respawn is making a um, another Star Wars game besides the Jedi series, and besides the third one that's you know currently being done. Um, they're making a FPS version. Um, oh, we lost Vincent. There we go. Okay, now we got him back. <laughs> um, we, he, they're making an FPS, uh, a Star Wars FPS, which is going to be pretty cool. I really mm. hope that that. I mean, I'm 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 dying for a little bit of like, maybe it's a successor to Battlefront Two, and maybe it's please. <laughs> yes please <laughs> please, <laughs> please. <laughs> all right uh maybe uh but yes Ro respawn is is working on that uh and so that this one actually comes to us from ubi soft um or ubisoft <laughs> some folks say and you know we saw the trailers for that video game um and it is touted as an open world game uh, and a lot of people were just, you know, one of the controversies, guys, is that a lot of people thought, wait a minute, we already have open world Star Wars games. What is this? <laughs> what do you mean? It's the first ever. Uh, and so I'll explain a little bit about that since I am kind of like the video game guru here. Uh, and so I'll explain a little bit about that. And the other part of it is that the main character is a girl. So... <laughs> You know, oh my, <laughs> right? Uh, and so I'll talk a little bit about that because I think it's it's so much less about her being the lead and more about the mechanics of the game, right? So I'll talk a little bit about that. I think that that's where the controversy really lies. So first, first, first and foremost, you know, for the last better part of like twenty years, probably more, <laughs> we have had. Uh, MMOs, which are your massive since 1997, which is the first one was Ultima Online. We have had MMOs. MMOs stand for Massive Multiplayer Online. That's a genre of game. And what that is, is basically you kind of have some, some of the files installed in your computer, but the majority of the world and the majority of everything that is involved in that game sits on cloud servers and everybody connects into it and you have character creation and you can create your characters based on what is being presented. You could, you know, like for example, World of Warcraft is, is a very famous MMO. So you can create your characters. You can be a horde or you can be alliance and you can be male and you can be female and you can be all of those things. And you load in and you can connect and play with other people, right? And group up and party and raid and all that good stuff. That's your traditional MMO. And back in the day, uh, you know, MMOs, I mean, I'll tell you, you know, World of Warcraft costs about $29 million to make. Um, <laughs> yes, I know. Um, and, 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 and a lot of people think that's a lot. It's not. Because what it costs today to make an MMO, is, to make a really, let me preface, by saying, to make a really good MMO would be roughly around 400 to 500 million. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yes. And World of Warcraft is probably quadrupled, if not octupled, their profits on on that game. Oh yes, absolutely, oh. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And so, in an MMO, right, you have the ability to have character creation, like I said, and all that good stuff. But that four hundred, five hundred million dollar price tag is just undoable. And so, the industry back in twenty seventeen, we had the the Game Developers Conference (GDC). And, you know, they sent out surveys and they said, you know, if we were to create a middle ground between an MMO, and here's the next one I'm going to explain, which is an RPG. Uh, an RPG is a role-playing game. It's single player. It usually has a quest that you follow, a main storyline quest that you follow, and you eventually get to an end and then you uninstall the game and you don't play it and you sit around and wait for the sequels, right? <laughs> so, 
so, so uh, Jedi Survivor is very much an RPG, okay? And so, uh, you know, the industry kind of came back together and they were like, well, you know, how do we do this? How do we, how do we create something that's in the middle? Because we obviously can't go around spending four or five hundred million dollars <laughs> to build what people are asking of, of us and they keep asking of us um, and they want to come up with some sort of middle ground. So the middle ground of that actually became what is now, now known as open world game. That's a genre. It's not just a feature in a video game. So like, for example, Jedi Survivor or World of Warcraft, you open up the map and you can go anywhere you want, travel anywhere you want, et cetera, et cetera. That's an open world feature in a game, mm -hmm. right? But this is different in the sense that we've actually created a brand new genre where there isn't a linear quest. So it's very much similar to how an MMO works where there isn't just a beginning, a middle and an end, right? Uh, uh, but uh, it's also locally installed, which- So basically kind of, a Bethesda game. Yes, very much so. Um, yeah. And I and I and I you know I like the idea of that, uh, but it, it it is kind of a new genre for us in the industry, and I think what it what has happened is a lot of folks have, uh, you know, been confused by the name. And we we there was a survey in 2017, uh, in, at the GDC that came to to all the industry professionals and said, hey, this kind of middle ground game, what would you call it? Um, because that's how we come up with everything nowadays is by vote. Um, and so we, there was, you know, I said there was one of the options was open-ended game, which I thought was better, a better description. And I voted for, uh, one of the options was open world game. So I knew that one won. I'm like, <laughs> I knew, I knew that one. And, uh, and so, you know, there was all these other options in there. I think one is like non-linear game, all this other thing. And we voted on, you know, all the industry professionals that were there were voted on. And that was, uh, that's kind of how that came about. Um, and so I think there's just been a lot of confusion between an open world feature in a game, which an RPG can have, an MMO can have. I mean, anybody, any game can have that, right? Uh, and this new, the name of this new genre, if you will. Um, but the, the reason for it is because people have been kind of clamoring for an MMO. I mean, that has been, I'm one of those, uh, but, you know, and, and my, my little gaming community of like over 5,000 people, TLP, uh, is one of those. We have been sitting around waiting <laughs> for a good MMO to come out that we can all converge together and play together and raid and, and PVP and do all those good things in. And it's not happening. It's been tried. I mean, Amazon tried with New World and it didn't happen. What so, about uh, Sword War? Well, Sword War is very old. Uh, right. the, you know, it's been, it's been around for a long time. Right, right now, um, unfortunately, uh, Bioware sold it. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. They did, they did. Mm -hmm. yeah. When? Yeah. Bioware sold it, I want to say, within the last 30 days. I can't remember Whoa. exactly when. They it's, sold really, it. it's fairly recent. Like, really yeah. recent. Yeah. yeah. They sold it over to Broadsword. And Broadsword is where... Yeah, hold on. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Not many people know about it because... But Broadsword has been around for a very long time. It used to be called Origin Systems Incorporated, OSI. And OSI was owned by Richard Garriott. And Richard Garriott was the main developer, you know, the, the conceptualist, if you will, of the MMO genre. He invented, created, deployed, managed, did everything for Ultima Online. And so Ultima Online still is a thing today. It still has 500,000 subscribers, believe yeah. it or not. <laughs> it's still a very, very popular oh. game. So when, uh, when they kind of said, okay, well, you know, it's still origin systems was sold to EA. Okay. So broadsword is owned by EA. Okay. Uh, and you know, they made, they made, they put basically Ultima online on maintenance mode. And so they did the same with another game called dark age of, of dark age of Camelot. And that game was wildly popular. I mean, we had a big, we played that game for five years. We had a huge guild in it. 
we, you know, commanded the entire server we were on, which was Lancelot. Um, you know, we were the underdogs. It was so much fun. We played it for five years. And then when that MMO actually went into, ser into like service maintenance mode, right? Because it got old, yet it still was profitable because there's still so many subscriptions to it. It was off shot over into Broadsword. So, you know, the, the, the joke is that Broadsword is where MMOs go to die. But the truth of it is, MM Broadsword is where MMOs get a dedicated team to keep it in maintenance mode and keep mm. it profitable. So they'll they'll do new content, they'll do all that kind of stuff. So all the team from BioWare that was on SWOTOR was moved over into Broadsword. Did they so, take RuneScape by chance? No, they don't. Uh, I okay. think they, they're specifically um, they're specifically focused on the MMO rant, rant, genre, right? Like massive mm. players. Um, so I know RuneScape has a little bit of that. I've never played RuneScape myself. Oh um, man, that was my game back in the day. <laughs> I love right, RuneScape. No. It's fun. It's so, fun. so, and just to add, just to answer my husband in the chat. Uh, hi, Jake. <laughs> my husband. No, uh, Shroud of the Avatar uh, is actually Richard Garriott still owns that, and he is he wanted nothing to do with EA, so no, he did not uh, has nothing to do with Broadsword at all. Uh, I'm actually really good friends with Richard Garriott, so um, yeah, yes. Okay, so June seventh, so like officially switched on June seventh. Thank you, Kings. Oh. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, uh, it's been it's been moved over into Broadsword, but it, Broadsword is a great studio. I know Masana very well. She's uh, she's the head of that studio. I know her very well. She's very passionate and she's very dedicated uh, about bringing still you know bringing that content to the players that actually enjoy those older games. I wish I wish EverQuest had gone to Broadsword because I think that would have been great. Um, you know, keeping that game alive, kind of thing. But what do you guys think about, in general, Star Wars? I know some of you may have never heard of this before, and some of you have. But what do you think about what's going on uh, in 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 the community around that game? What are your thoughts about that? Anyone, jump in. I, I mean, look, I, I guess I'll go. Get me out of the way. Um, I, talk, I talk too much anyway. I was expecting Ross to go first. Yeah, yeah, I was so, waiting for Jim. Yeah. I was waiting for what are you to trying to say? Yeah. What are you emperor. trying to say? Take the lead, my emperor. I just, <laughs> exactly. I just, I don't know. So, you know, it's funny when I think about open world games, I always think about, you know, Bethesda is the first one that comes to mind. So mm -hmm. the great thing about open world games is that you get to, you know, it's like a pick your own destiny. You can explore it however you want to. And the, the coolest thing about it for me has always been able, you're always able to create a character that you feel represents you or something so fanatically wild that it just makes the game fun for you. I, you know, I think about um, Oblivion and, and uh, Skyrim are like two of my absolute favorites, any of the Elder Scrolls stuff. But that ability to kind of put yourself into the world is what I enjoy so much. And I feel like it kind of detracts from that, not being able to be whoever you want to be in the open world, because you very much make that open world your own as opposed to playing through the perspective of somebody else yeah. so i just thought it was kind of a weird choice i mean i get it uh, everything has to be female in star wars now so like i understand the direction that they're going in but for me personally i would have much rather had a, an awesome in-depth character customization and then the ability to do whatever you want almost like star wars galaxies where you could have been a jedi or a bounty hunter or if, and if you want to yeah. be a jedi it's going to take you five years to get there and if you die it's all over yeah. like you yeah. know like, well i mean basically you just described swotor so <laughs> i mean yeah. that's really that's really how that game is right and i think uh, i think i think you're right i think the expectation from people was if this is truly like an open world game i would like to be able to create my own character in it um i guess but, I feel more yeah go ahead play. Just me. No, because it, then it just feels more like role play than it is. Like the open world is more mm. like a feature rather than a highlight. It's supposed to complement the whole experience and the immersion, but it just becomes kind of like, hey, this is a story, but by the by, enjoy the world. Right. You know, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I totally I thought agree it was, with you. Yeah. yeah. I was just expecting it to go in a different direction originally yeah. when I heard the news about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What did you expect that it would be? When you first heard it, Josephine. 
Well, because I the thing about Star Wars, especially if they're jumping into the whole uh, open world aspect, is so that we could experience more of the diversities of the world. Like if we wanted to go to, you know, learn about Chewbacca's family and all that culture, we get to venture into that, you know? Um, I understand that obviously there would be like a world story because every open world needs some kind of like situation going on and that's fine. But I kind of agree with Voss was like, if I want to jump into the dark side or have that experience of, you know what, I want my character to have some massive trauma and be really gripped with this conflict of inner fight and everything, then I would be able to actually, you know, twist that kind of like if you were to play yeah. Sims and you just want to put your Sims in a pool without a way out. Yep. Kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, I want You're to do a that. terrible person. <laughs> I do that. The of my character, you know. I do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and I think I think you know one of the things, and I and and I did talk to Sharon about this a little bit, um, you know, on Monday, um, was that you know, basically, the Jedi series, right? So Jedi Fallen Order was launched in 2019. And Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor both have open world game features, open world features within their games, right? Uh, not a problem. And, and I think that, you know, was there really that kind of backlash or that kind of necessity to play your own character with Jedi Fallen Order? Did you have that experience, any of you? Like, were you like, when Jedi Fallen Order first came out in 2019, did you go, well, this is lame. I can't create my own character. No, because I feel like it no. was it was like a ride on rails game. You know what I mean? That yeah. That is very much a narrative driven as opposed to an open world. Like you said, it's a feature, but that was a ride on rails experience. It was a story being told from somebody's perspective. That's what I wanted them to shift away from when it came okay. to an open world game. Yeah. yeah. I'll shut up now. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Sharon? No, I Oh, oh I mean, no, it's okay. Sure, sure. Okay, <laughs> I'll cite you over it, darn it. <laughs> um, you know, it, when you go in a game, you kind of know that it's going to be okay. I'm playing this character, you know. If I go in and I'm playing a Tomb Raider game, it's Laura Croft. If I'm going in and I'm playing uh, Jedi Survivor, I'm Cal Kestis. So to me, it's like big deal. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly didn't understand that backlash, to be honest, because I thought, I guess I'm looking at this game as more of an RPG than an MMO. And I think for Ross and for Josephine, they're looking at more like similar to an MMO mm -hmm. than an RPG, right? You're, you're, you're I mean, it is nice to be able to create your own character Absolutely. with their own backstory, but you know, you got to go with what the game developers have decided it's their vehicle i think i think that I, you, I think you more, enjoy more, what you have yeah the more accurate way is like i feel like i'm playing have you guys played hogwarts legacy yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it feels like it. that it feels like that just with the whole multiplayer aspect of it where yeah you have some sense of your own character but everything else is driven for your character. You have yeah. little choices along the way, but everything else is pretty much streamlined in terms of the story, um, as opposed to, I guess, because I love MMOs and I've, I've always played those kinds of like um, Final Fantasy and yeah, like Skyrim and stuff like that. So my concept of, of an MMO or even an open world is very Black Desert Online where you can decide your occupation, you can play with the market and you can like, mm -hmm you know, um, have different angles as to how you want to yeah. go about playing the game. Yeah. Now it just feels like there's a whole lot of, it just feels like Zelda. I was just thinking that in my brain. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. that was yeah. my first open world game was Ocarina of Time. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 for sure. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I was just, from what they were announcing about the game early on, it just felt like that's what they were giving us. And then turns out it's like, oh, okay all right like that that's just my only impression yeah you know yeah, yeah. and i mean i i'm still gonna play it <laughs> yeah, sure. play it. Oh, yeah. dude, i'm gonna play the heck out of that game right yeah. um uh especially because you know i i i'm a huge fan 
of what George was look was looking to do essentially yeah. at the beginning yeah. with a game that he was working on developing called 1313. And yep. so it was all about the underground, it was all about the the, the gangs and the We got know, a trailer. And, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm I know. I feel the Star Wars games have been criminally mishandled, and like I blame yeah. EA for a lot of that. But do you remember like the golden age of like Lucas? Oh my God, dude, Lucas Arts was uh, it formed my childhood. Yes, yes, the X Wing, the Tie Fighter, like oh, those yeah. games were so great. I mean, I, you know, I had a little bit to do with Squadrons, and 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 in some instances, but you know, I I really wish that Squadrons would have been more like that. I honestly feel that in terms of the game, Star Wars franchise has honestly been kind of left behind. They really didn't do much, as much as they could have with that massive yeah. amount of support. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, what happened with Eclipse? Because I remember seeing trailers for that and then mm -hmm. just nothing. Yeah, so Eclipse is still in development. It has um, some budget issues. They sold it off, didn't they? Um, no, no. What's that the was name the, of the the Canadian studio picked it up? No, no, no. Quantic? That was that was that was the the Kotor remake. The Kotor remake was with Aspire in Canada. Montreal, I thought they Canada. did. I thought they did the and same thing with Eclipse. It. Was that they basically made that real for somebody else who had more money to buy it? No, no. Oh. Quantic Dream still no. Quantic Dream still owns Eclipse, and they're mm. still working on Eclipse. Quantic Dreams is out of France. So they're more, uh, you know, f they're French studios. So it's kind of easy to confuse that one and Aspire because Aspire's in Montreal. Uh, but well, they have a Canadian studio, don't they, Quantic? No, I don't. I don't think so. No. Yeah, yeah, the guy, the guy who ran the Canadian studio, that was like the whole thing. A bunch of people were mad about the game because was that the Kotor remake? That was, was Kotor remake. Okay, all right, I'm that totally mixing up my stories. And so Kotor, the Kotor remake did get sold off to another studio, gotcha. so Aspire doesn't have it anymore. Uh, but that one was a, that was a mess. Like they spent so much money trying to, you know, I mean, you really are taking a very old game and trying to port it into a system and, and you want it to play on PC too. I mean, I, I think that's a little um, ambitious if I'm honest, because we have had so many different wild experiences with different configurations for PC gaming for so long. Like we can't possibly, it's, and then, you know, you launch a game and if it doesn't work on PC, people are crying about it. like crazy yeah. with reason they paid money they want to be able to play the game with reason but it's just impossible like there's so many different configurations for pcs that it's just crazy it's impossible to test yeah. for everything it's impossible mm. to you know do all of that stuff and it's like you know what are we going to do with that you know so yeah yeah and how many versions of windows are there and how many no, different yeah. video drivers are in the machines and yes yes how far back do you want to make it compatible yeah and so guys if you have any comments around the video games that are coming out for star wars do leave us a comment below i'll try to get back to them and answer you i mean i'm i'm in video game development so i can have some more insight as much as i can uh, but we're going to go ahead and move into our second topic, which is the sound of the dark side. A thermal detonator? Darth Vader's breathing? Lightsabers clashing? A star destroyer dropping out of hyperspace? TIE fighters flying overhead? These are all the familiar sounds of Star Wars. What does it take to really bring those sounds to life? Let's find out. And Chris... This is your segment, buddy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. He's like, okay, no pressure, yeah. no pressure. <laughs> so, you know, we, what, we I was definitely... supposed to talk. <laughs> oh, wait, you wanted me to talk? <laughs> That's probably well, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll be right back. This is a perfect time for for a, a, a bio break, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, you know, I, I mean, Guys, I mean, how are, I mean, of all the sounds in film history, I mean, Star Wars, right? I mean, some of the most yeah. iconic oh, no, hands sounds, down. hands down, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, from Darth Vader's voice and his breathing 
you know, to, 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 gosh, okay. Can we just talk a little bit about the thermal detonators? <laughs> Cause oh, you know, baby. oh yeah, let's do that. <laughs> right. And, and just like the tie, you know, the tie fighters flying by the flybys, all of those sounds are just so rich and so iconic and so immediately recognizable. Right. Like yeah. you walk around yeah. and you hear a lightsaber. You're like, that's a lightsaber. Where's it coming? Thanks from? Ben. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Mr. The great, the amazing Ben Burt, who created, you know, originated all these sounds uh, so creatively too. Right, Chris? I mean, oh, yeah. you can talk a little bit about how creative you get in trying to make these sounds. So I know that you've watched some of those, uh, some of those, uh, you know, videos around how Ben Burt created the lightsaber sounds, um, you know. Yeah. And uh, you yeah. can talk a little bit about that. Uh, you know, and, and, and also what is your process for creating those original sounds? Because we are creating all original sounds in this movie. So, uh, you know, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So obviously because the sounds are so distinct, I, I had to try and mimic those as better to my best, like ability and basically learn a whole new skill in, in trying to, uh, find out what was these sounds most of it uh, there was many of them that i could find which were from the there's a series of uh, documentaries where ben burt on youtube talks about the the sound design for the original trilogy which helped me with my baseline to get so many sounds like where he just did they talk about how they did the the tie fighter sounds um how we they created the lightsaber so many things where you're like oh right these were very important for me to know you know like the fact that the the laser blast was just uh, a, hit, a slinky a with, wire. Uh, <laughs> yeah it was a slinky with a with a pickup on one end and hitting it with a like a, a piece of metal or a stick and you're like wait that that's it and so yeah it's just a frequency bouncing across the, the slinky um and <laughs> so a lot of them were quite surprising and uh, really interesting to find out. Go, oh, right, that's how they did that. I never, you'd never consider it. Like the TIE Fighter being uh, a mix of a car passing by uh, on a wet road and- uh, Through Asian a vacuum elephants. tube. And Asian elephants. Yep. Yes. And you're like, and you just put those together and you're like, wait, what? That's, yes. it's like, yeah. And I think that's the part that's so wildly creative, right? Like you really get to like, you know, experiment on, you know, the blend of sounds that you never thought would ever go together. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, and, and can you and imagine that... his, uh, can you imagine his search history on, on, on Google? <laughs> <laughs> Chris is, Chris is going to have to divulge to the secret of his search history. I just, the, the, I, the coolest He's thing already is... on 10 FBI watch lists because of it. <laughs> It was kind of like, it was kind of a perfect, like, you know, necessity is the mother of invention that he didn't have any digital software really to like mash any of this stuff yeah. together. So the cool thing about the original trilogy and establishing this foundation for all these different sounds was that everything was organic. So even yeah. though it sounds like super gnarly, it's all, it's all based off of something we already know. I would argue maybe not like the vacuum tubes on the TV for the lightsaber, but I mean, it just sounds like... Yeah, that could exist. That could be a thing, you know, like a Tie Fighter engine, twin yeah. ion engine, and some. And now, like anywhere you go, that pitch, that frequency, that Wah! you're like, I know what that is. Yeah, exactly. Um, and again, that's one of the things that makes the Star Wars franchise so iconic. It's just you can hear something from one of the from one of the movies and be like, that's that Star Wars. Instantly recognizable. Um, okay, I gotta ask, hardest sound you had to make for this project? Ooh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Oh. <laughs> because, um, I mean, like, you're, you're, I'm, I'm hearing all these, like, oh, I have to figure out this and that, and I'm like, hardest puzzle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ask you. <laughs> I, that is a really tough question. I, I want to say the Millennium Falcon engine. Mm. Actually, because that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Because I had to create that from scratch and really had to listen to it so many times and go right. These are the things I need to try and incorporate into it, and 
at so many different layers of different sounds and to try and get that that unique sound that the Millennium Falcon has was uh, was really it's like bassy yeah. and screechy at the same time. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of low end and high end at the same time. It's hard to make yeah, that yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. So... And if it's not right, everybody's gonna say that's not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, that's that... not the Falcon. You suck. Yes. And and that's that's the thing also. Like you know, having to create you know the sounds from scratch, uh, you know, presents that challenge of you know you really are going to have to in some in Millennium Falcon. You know, you really are gonna have to like work on that and really yeah. try and, and, to get it as close as possible because the fans will eat you alive. <laughs> yeah. And it's like it's not even just about even sound effects because like unless you've actually tried to make some form of audio audio track, mm -hmm. your ears really do start to train itself to blend the sounds together and it just like you even taking a break from it, you're and you come back and I'm like, nope, it's still I I every I just Everything. I would not touch. I would yes. not touch it for like if I was you, Chris. Honestly, <laughs> what do you think? His headphones are so bulky, guys. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you gotta He's get immersed. Gotta, you gotta get immersed. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What? Well, you gotta listen to to each of the sounds and go right. What? What's this got in it? It's got. I need to try and dismantle it and then re yeah. uh, like put it and together again, but engineer. using my own sounds. Yeah, yeah effectively yeah. reverse engineer the sounds and. Yeah. Yeah. And what is no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Right, right. Uh, and what has been like your experience in creating the Foley sounds, like going out into the world and recording the sounds of the world, uh, uh, you know, uh, and things the like that. Foley like the Foley stuff <laughs> is, uh, it's a blast. It is so much fun. So um, jealous. And you do, so you get so many weird looks at people like, like what, what are you doing? I am trying to imagine that right now with you, Chris. <laughs> um, you got still two coconuts. <laughs> just be like, uh, hey, don't mind me. I'm gonna record the way you walk. Just, just keep doing your thing. <laughs> funny, funny you should say that. I was very tempted to go and walk around, uh, like find a museum where it's a, there's loads of echo. Yeah, um, spaceport. Like, yes. Yeah, like a spaceport or uh, like Munalist, the the for the uh, the back clan headquarters. Oh, I was like, yeah. I was gonna. The idea, the plan was to go to a museum so I could get all the ambient echo and the like records, say, like find somebody with like uh, shoes or heels on and then like, yeah, try and ask like if I can tile record floor. Them. Yeah, yeah, on like yeah. a marble floor. I mean, worst comes to worst, you're going to have to bring a backpack full of your own shoes and just make that own sound. So you're yeah. just constantly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I, I, I distinctly remember you saying that you were going to have to do that for Elian when she comes off the ramp. At Munalist, oh, the, that's the right. sound, the metal ramp, you know, and you have oh, the gosh, boots coming yeah. down the metal ramp. I remember that, uh, Chris, you saying about that. So that's, but I, I just love that that's it. It brings you so much joy. I see it, like when when you when you're working, you're like, this is just so much fun. It's not yeah. even really work, right? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So often the, the times I'm doing stuff with Foley, I'm like, I'm I'm being paid to do this. Like, yeah. <laughs> It's such a fun puzzle because like you really have to find the thing that you know anybody who hears it their brain automatically registers as it you know it's true yeah. and it's yeah. such like it is such an uncelebrated job to be able to yeah. do it mm -hmm. so well that nobody notices it. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, 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 distinctly, and, and, and when we talk about that I mean everybody knows the name John Williams. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, yeah. But only a select few know who Ben Bird is. So as far as like, um, you know, as, as far as like, you know, like fame, right? Or being known as someone, you know, in Hollywood, Ben Burt is a legend, but like for people who watch movies, they probably don't know who that is, but because John Williams- Nobody's gonna run out something. and buy the soundtrack of Foley. <laughs> right, right, yeah. exactly. I would. I will. You know, so it is- <laughs> I don't know. Yes, I think, me too, I, think I, think I would too. Really good for an <laughs> ASMR, you know? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I think that that's also like a, a really difficult um, realization, right? Like, you know, you're going into a field, you're not going to be seen, you know, just because John Williams created, you know, the, dun, 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 you know, like it's so recognizable. It's played all over the place and people throw it in their cars and listen on their, you know, iTunes and stuff like that. You know, you don't get that for, for sound design. 
And no, so but awesome. more people think... know you than more people know the sound that you created than I would say people you. would know James, James, you know, a John Williams voice. Like you could put on the Imperial March. Maybe somebody doesn't recognize it or like, you know, across the stars or something. You mm -hmm. light off a lightsaber. Everybody mm -hmm. knows. Everybody yes. knows. Immediately. Yes. And, I, and, and I personally, I... If, I, if I was an artist, I would prefer that to be known more for my work than for my name. Yeah. And and honestly, I don't know about you guys, but I would totally love to fall asleep to Darth Vader just breathing down next to me on my neck. And I was like, yep. This is why she's the problem. perfect Dark Town. <laughs> Every <laughs> Perfect I had character. Darth Vader as my GPS voice for a while. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I love that. <laughs> Got a little um, creepy, your though, ropes you are know? in the camera, sweet. You got to push them off to the side there. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm exposing myself. I, excuse yeah. me while I step away. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. So, yeah. And then I think, you know, I think that's just a, a, an attestment to you, Chris, that, you know, you really do take so much joy in the work and I hope everybody when when you guys get to hear the film and see the film you really start listening more to that and just be like bow down to Mr. Chris Alto. So thank you so much for that. I really yes. appreciate it. Special that. cutscene to you, greatness. <laughs> Indeed. That's right. <laughs> All right. And then we go into our favorite, our next topic. So if you have a comment, guys, if you have comments or questions or anything about sound design, about audio engineering, jump down to the comments, leave us some some your questions, and I'll make sure that Chris gets them, and we'll, we'll try to answer what we can. Uh, you know, and uh, and. Uh, you just enjoy it, you know, when you when you finally do get to see the film and you get to see this upcoming trailer that we're working on, uh, which has a lot of dark dark side sounds. Let me tell you, <laughs> yes, uh, you you can you can appreciate Chris for that. All right, so topic number three is the big one. It's the villains of Star Wars. Darth Vader is one of film history's greatest villains. That's undisputed. There are people that have undoubtedly idolized the likes of Vader, Palpatine, Maul, Malgus, Revan, Vitiate, and more. How do you create an evil character that everyone loves? And what makes them so appealing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we're back. <laughs> X was saying, you know, that's such an impractical building, the, the Exegol Sith building. I'm like, yeah, no, it's an upside down pyramid. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, the architect yeah, sure. had the drawings upside down. Uh, yeah, he just walked just up. He's like, you it. did it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just go with it. <laughs> well, it's done now. <laughs> yeah, can't take it back. <laughs> All There's right. The key, like, you weren't even here. How can you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be angry. You were supposed right? to be here. You're the architect. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> You know, uh, so yeah, but yeah, I mean, that's one thing that I am very keen on. And I think X, X and I, we, we mend really well on this one <laughs> is, is I really want to create a love of villains again in Star Wars. Uh, you know, um, I want to be, I want people to cry, you know, when one of their favorite Darksiders is, is unceremoniously killed off, right? Um, uh, because I want to be able to give you guys the investment into those characters. And I think you really can't just like, for example, Snoke, we knew nothing about him. And then he was just like sliced in half and it's like, but he had so much potential. And I think like we really just didn't get to know anything about him. And I think that's a travesty. Like, I feel like, you know, if you're really gonna build something with, 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 a, with a, an evil character, you really got to take them on journey. You got to take the audience yeah. on a journey. I mean, that's what made the prequels freaking amazing. I don't care who says this. <laughs> Another thing X and I agree on. I don't care what you say. The prequels were brilliant. And the prequels yes. were brilliant because it took us on the journey to Darth Vader. And I thought that was... I love the prequels. I love the stories of the prequels. Everything about it just because... We really, I mean, I was fascinated as a little girl with Darth Vader. That was the character I gravitated, not because I'm, yeah. you know. <laughs> I, was, I, was a nine -year -old Sith. I was a nine year old Sith, <laughs> not because of that, but you know, I mean, he was just so cool, right? Like so cool. Um, you know, and as a young little girl, so you're cool watching that. Without anybody knowing what his backstory was. 
Right. Yes, right? And, and and it fascinated me. And I felt like, oh my gosh, I want to know more about this character. And then, you know, several years, you know, 20 some years later, I got the prequels and I was like so freaking happy. I was like, yeah. Yeah. wait, you're making three films about my favorite characters? Sign me on. I'm, I'm for the ride. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, perfect. Friggin' mint. Yeah, I just like, it's you know, just, and I, I blame... <laughs> I kind of blame George Lucas for this, to be honest, but like, can we, for the love of God, can we just let some evil people be evil? Because yeah. after Darth Vader, everybody had to be redeemed, right? Everybody who yeah. tells a villain story, they have to be redeemed. They have to come back to the light. The bad guys, like, no, can we have some bad guys just be bad for the sake of being bad? Is that okay? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, like, yes, you're allowed yes. to have bad people. <laughs> That's what makes guy. bad guys. <laughs> That's what I think good it's good to say, bad guys, I think though. It's good to say that none of the bad, none of the people, or sorry, none of the members of the dark side over here is ever gonna turn good. Can we make a solemn oath right, right here, with everyone being our witness? Like, I wanna be bad. Right. Well, we, we know bad. Emperor like, Vicious. Bad, baby. <laughs> we know Emperor Vicious <laughs> is never gonna be good. <laughs> you know, he is never gonna be good. Irene, welcome, Irene. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, so uh, I can guarantee that. It is a point that. of view, anyway. It is. It is a point of view, but it. But you know what? I agree with it, right? And I, I and sitting yeah. here, guys, sitting right in front of you, are you know four people who are embodying the voices of these characters who are never going to be good. <laughs> Ain't no if redemption guys, around here, boy. Nope. If you guys were even like around, if you guys could even see the bloopers of some of the, our sessions, yes. woo. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm for a, sure. Woo! <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, honestly, you know, I mean, Darth Nil. Well, we're really the nicest people ever. <laughs> Not me, sweetheart. Not no, me. no. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, and two of the four, two of these four Wait. folks are, you know, they're part of a very beloved section of Star Wars that I felt like needed, you know, the spotlight. It needed, like, why haven't we brought in some of the characters from the expanded universe into our films? You know, yeah. and especially and, when and it makes sense. Like, Palpatine coming sense. back does. doesn't make a whole it lot of sense. Know, right. Sense. Well, <laughs> I think Talon was Talon was conscripted to actually be in one of the earlier. Um, uh, I can't yes, in, in George Lucas's trilogy. George Lucas Sequel. is yeah, exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they took it. What? Why? I'll tell you why. why. <laughs> I'll tell you why. why? Because, because uh, Disney would have had to change. I, uh, you know, uh, if 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 George Lucas would have done his trilogy, like he himself, I even think George Lucas would have changed Darth Talon. She's kind she, of a sex kitten. She is. Yeah. And I and I think that and even e even in. for George Lucas, she's a bit much. <laughs> I think <laughs> I, I I think I think I think George Lucas himself would have dumbed her down a little bit in that sense in that regard. Yeah, she's well, she's hypersexualized and extremely violent. Mm -hmm. yes. Like two things Disney could never do right. Could never off. do. Yeah. No. no. Right. But even jo but what I'm saying to you is even if if Disney wasn't even in the picture that I, yeah. that if it was George Lucas executing his sequel trilogy, he would have dumbed her down a little bit in that regard. Not in the badassery. Right. Like she'd still be badass, but she yeah. wouldn't be yeah. like, you know, half naked. <laughs> right. Um, so and I think one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is George. Yeah, Lucas I don't know, though. Look at Padme. Know? Because well the thing is because yeah, like I that girl shows a lot of skin and the, and the yeah but well, you can't go I, I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm but you cannot compare Padme to Dark Talon. <laughs> I'm talking about costumes, okay. Yeah. Uh, and let's not forget Leia's little Leia drama. slave bikini. Uh, bikini. Okay, no, oh I mean like gosh. honestly, honestly, um, yeah. I, I, if if we even had just Dark Talon as a cameo or like a bodyguard where she's just as. She, she just is quiet, literally just pulls out her blade every once in a while, does her thing, and then just back to, you know, soldier mode. That'd be fine, too. Just It would confirm where she would be close to the story that George Lucas had, had envisioned, you know? Yeah. And when you pulled her out, I was just like, I was literally looking at the screen for something red to appear, just anything. 
you know. Yeah. Well, the thing was, is, you know, George did get to execute that trilogy. Tre that trilogy treatment, that sequel trilogy treatment um, was written a long time before the, the sale of Disney. Yeah. Okay. So he mm -hmm. had that mm -hmm. in his arsenal for a long time. And he did get to execute the story of that treatment in the Clone Wars because the first part of that wasn't, you know, was it was supposed to be Darth Talon, yes, but it was also supposed to be Darth Maul. Yeah. And and just the uh, thought of those yeah. two together. Oh my god! Oh. Right? <laughs> right? Right? Yes. Yes. It has you being yes. red? <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, I think, uh, you know, but, but George Lucas did get to execute that as part of the Clone Wars. He just did, he, what he said was, I don't want to change Darth Talon from what she is in the EU. He changed his mind about that. And he then replaced her with Savage Opress. And yeah. that storyline was played out in the Clone Wars. And we saw Darth Maul return and, you know, he was like spider bot for a while. I I, I don't know what I, what was going on there, but, you know, and he was, you know, but he came back and he, you know, he had his, his apprentice was his brother instead of Darth Talon. So George did get to execute a, a lot of that treatment in the Clone Wars. I didn't um, like Arachno Maul. I'm just going to go I on record saying I didn't like Arachno Maul. It was weird. It was, it was weird. <laughs> You know, just give him, you know, just give him, you know, bot legs. We don't need eight. Eight was too many. Yeah, call Thundercat <laughs> from Book of Boba Fett and slap some, you know, mods on him. Or, oh, God. I felt like it took away his evil and it just made him seem silly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It did. It did. And, and, and I mean, it, like I said, George is brilliant, right? And everybody loves George, but George also made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. We're human. So we're, you know, uh, how horrible for him to have been human. I know. <laughs> right. Uh, but, you know, the story of the one Sith is so, I mean, it, for anybody that's ever uh, dove into those books of the expanded universe, I mean, the story of the one Sith is really great just because I felt like the one Sith, which the leader of one Sith was Darth mm -hmm. Krayt. Until Darth Nail killed him <laughs> and took the throne, because that's what Sith do, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, Let's but, go, Darth uh, Bane. Yes, uh, <laughs> but but you know, uh, uh, you know, th their premise was they wanted to create an entire army of Sith. Uh, of Sith around them. They wanted it to be a kingdom, if you will, and they wanted it to be, you know, large and in charge, right? <laughs> uh, and so uh, that that premise was so... I mean, it just makes sense that with what Darth Talon and Darth Nil and Darth Malati, um, you know, what they believe in and what their structure has been and what, you know, what they want for the Sith Empire aligns so like eye to eye with the way that Emperor Vitiate ruled, you know, his Sith Empire 5,000 years before, uh, you know, yeah. which was, you know, I am your one king and you shall bow down. <laughs> and so uh, I feel like that. But what's the problem with Sith? What's the problem with Sith? This is why Darth Bane is base as hell, man. He was like, here's the problem with Sith. If you group them together, they will... The three weak show. ones, three weak ones yeah. will get together and kill one strong one. We got to yeah. get rid of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got to yeah. make the Sith great again. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, uh, where's Tyler where you need him? <laughs> I know. <laughs> but yes, I mean, and that's, and that's, you know, that's the story of Darth Bane, of why Darth Bane put in and instituted the rule of two, right? Which we are very familiar with. But, you know, Personally, I miss the big lightsaber fights. Yeah, like, me too. You know, yeah. you know, like, 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 and, so and the perfect, old Republic was perfect trilogy. Have yeah. all that that leads up to why Darth Bane created the Rule of Two. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Right. Glorious. Glorious. Yeah. We're doing it. <laughs> so, so, let's do know, it. Let's do it. <laughs> so I think that that's, uh, you know, that's a very, very, very interesting thing. But also, just you know. And I said this before, like, of all the people that could come back from death, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you, you know, it's just, 
logical that it's Emperor Vitiate because he's mm -hmm. just he's tenacious little motherfucker. <laughs> I'm just he's gonna say more. it. Let's be honest. Yeah, he's on worse. steroids. Yeah. He's worse, you know, and, yeah. and oh, yeah. he's just he just has so much willpower. Um, you know, survival. He just looks at death and goes, "Fuck you," <laughs> right? Just like I'm not gonna do it. Spicy, I Maria. Know, I know. I know. Spicy <laughs> take. Spicy take. Uh, and and you know, I just I love that about him, and and just the, the the fact that you know, then you have this 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 elite group of Sith that have all been hiding, you know, hiding in the wings and hiding in the outer rim and the unknown regions of the galaxy. And, you know, they've just been amassing people. Just, you know, and, and Darth Nil killing Darth Crate and, and having that kind of play out. And, I don't know what to do with myself. I have no master. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? Which which plays a little bit because, you know, that's that's something that you guys Well, you look see. impressionable. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you. <laughs> I'll take you. <laughs> right? And so, you know, that's one thing that will also play out is, is the rivalry within the One Sith. We get to see that because that actually, exactly what X was saying, that actually does happen. The Sith are constantly, you know, fighting for power. In and flux. Yeah. I know. Yes. And so to have Darth Talon go, motherfucker. You killed my master, uh, you know, with Nar Darth Nil and Darth Nil, and they just they just have this very tumultuous, very contentious. That's like the one thing I had going for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you took it away. <laughs> oh damn! Yes, and that's and but, that's but, so much. That is so much her character, you know. Yes. Uh, yeah. By the way, guys, don't worry. That is not the, the none of the voices you hear this are in the movie. Just to make yeah, no, clear. this is not screen <laughs> accurate. This is not, not, not screen, screen accurate. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Chris, we um, have a time trying to, uh, trying to freaking mix this and be like, what the hell? Yes, King. So absolutely, you know, spent thousand years planning a takeover, lasting 18 years and fail. Rule of two was dumb. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Palpatine murfed that whole thing up. <laughs> you know? Uh, I'm just really being was. honest. He he should have seen what was coming, dude, and he didn't. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And I so I was and, a and creepy old man. He was a creepy old man. But I just I love the I love the rivalry between Darth Nil and Darth Malat, uh, Darth Talon, and you know having Darth Malati kind of be in the in in between that too, uh, where there's a little something between Darth Malati and Darth Nil that's you know Sith. You know they're they got cool a lot of they got a lot of passion. Around it is high school drama, you know, like you steal my boyfriend, I'm gonna deal with your boyfriend. I'm gonna have to <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Star Wars is a soap opera. It's a soap oh, yeah. opera. Very much, very much. <laughs> right? I want to oh, go back to that God, it? because yeah. Emperor Vision is like. The person that we thought was dead, he's come back. Dun dun dun. Right. <laughs> That's very yeah. soap opera. Very. It's soap like opera. that. It's like that even in in the games, especially like Swotor. You beat Vitiate, Valkori, uh, Valkorian, and you, every time you beat them, you'll you're like, yeah. you're like we beat him. Is is he actually dead? <laughs> <laughs> we we think so. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. as far as we know, he's dead. We think he's yep. gone. And, and, Maybe and... So he's really been hiding in the mountains somewhere, recovering to come back. Exactly, <laughs> it's true. And that's what that's what the best villains do. They're like, oh god, he's not actually dead. He's back, and he's better than ever. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> he's really pissed off. Yeah, and 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 honestly, I mean, you know, the one Sith they they really embody the the the. The, the centrifuge of 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 alien races, right? Mm -hmm. Darth Talon is a, is a Twi'lek, and a red one at that, which is a very rare coloring. And then you have Darth Nil, who is a Nagai. Very cool looking. I mean, Darth Nil is very cool looking. And, you know, master of daggers and kind of like, you know, it's super stealthy and like that kind of stuff, you know? And, and you know, Darth Maladi is, is a Deveronian. So you, you get to see a lot of those alien races, which is just so familiar in, in the Star Wars world. And, and that's what we want to see. We want to see all those things. Yeah. You know, that's what makes it Star Wars and feel like Star Wars for us. So, and then Alien, 
Uh, you know, Sharon over here, Elian <laughs> is a lesser known character. You know, uh, a lot of people don't don't spend a lot of time in the comics. Um, you know, that's that's a very unique fandom niche. Yeah. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, to to then be able to take that character and flesh her out. I mean, what has that experience been like for you? I mean, I know that you've read some of the some of the, like the synopsis of the stuff around her and getting to know her and in your research. Yeah. Well, I mean, the first thing I did was get my hands on those issues of the 2020 series so that I could just ingest everything I could. And I just fell in love with her more and more because what an amazing backstory she has. Yeah. You know, she is 100% Imperial, mm -hmm. whether it's the Empire or the First Order. That's her life. Yep. And those darn rebels and their prick of a princess went and ripped <laughs> her family apart, blew up her mentor. Yes. <laughs> well, there, she okay. doesn't like she Leia, is. if anybody's trying to figure out what that means. Peod. <laughs> She's slightly peod. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I guess you can't believe the immersion not... is real. Yeah. 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 So, you so, know, you in just all of that and then you've got to make a two-dimensional drawing into a three-dimensional person with that kind of depth so you've got all of those emotions that all you get are you know typewritten words and you know i i never felt like okay i've got to become alien but it just happened <laughs> okay. and sorry guys i now realize when sharon does that laugh oh my gosh this is where it's coming from mm -hmm. <laughs> she is pissed the fuck off <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah for happy sure camper. Not a Those happy gamber. Friggin' cinnamon buns ruined my cinnamon future. Buns. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I love it. Yeah, no, yeah. Oops. And and she gets to, you know, she gets to, you know, one of the things is 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 you know, we get to see her be a person who's just constantly with like a chip on her shoulder, you know. She's oh yeah, always got something to prove. Um, and she feels like she always has something to prove. Well, that's she, what it is. You know, really she's is. really, yeah. she, she oh, is so Kitty incredibly is insecure because her parents were ripped away from her. Her mentor was ripped away from her. She's always got to prove herself to somebody. Mm -hmm. and, and who was her mentor? <laughs> Grand Moff Tarkin, of course. Of course. <laughs> All right. So, His you know. You... stench could be smelled. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Like, uh, he, you know, he's not for anything. And the thing about uh, Tarkin was also he, he didn't, you know, he kind of pinned all of his little, like, apprentices against each other. And yeah. he did not think Elian was the one that would rise above it and come out alive out of that. He really and I think did she not knew think it, so. which is yes. why she decided, I'm not just going to do what he tells me. I'm mm -hmm. going to take care of the rest of them, too. Yes. And she killed everybody. She killed yep. all some, of them. Those are some seriously <laughs> greasy <laughs> rungs you got to climb to, yeah. to get up. And, yeah. Kill them yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's it's I one of those. And, and that tenacity, I think, is something that's just absolutely, just absolutely entices Vitiate to pick her. And yeah. for the first time in her life, she was picked. We yeah. giving away too much? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> honestly, like I, I have had such a joy watching Sharon do her piece every time she comes up on the roll because it's just like, she's like, because you you have a very sweet demeanor and it's like, oh, and you're always funny. And then all of a sudden, Whoa! and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> She gets yes, wicked witch. Bow down, right? Quick. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, bow but, down. But it's guys. not even just that. Like, like she, she has a serious face on, and she's just like, 
really yelling at, 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 at like the anger out right i'm just like i got goosebumps anybody would i don't have a lot of hair but like it's there <laughs> it's on stands yes absolutely See, it, it's DW. a total catharsis to, I mean, that's why most actors want the villain roles. Society yeah. tells us we got to be nice. We got to get mm -hmm. along. We've got to agree. We've, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. but we're human I mean, beings. We, you know, yeah. there's a reason that if it bleeds, it leads in the press because mm -hmm. there, there is some base need for us to see conflict. Yeah. So to play the villain is really cathartic. You, you cast off the shackles of societal norms and act yes. on your own accord. You can do whatever you want. You have the yep. power and, to do it. So why and it's a totally it? safe place to do it. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, the pretense sure. is that we're supposed to be mean to each other, and that's always fine. It's like playing Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And Vincent, I actually uh, think you know. And Vincent, for you, I mean, you know, you you always have to, from day one, you're like, if it's a dark sider, I'm playing it. <laughs> you know, that you you pretty much gravitate to the dark side, don't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. So talk talk to me a little bit about Yeah, I mean that. I think I think we've touched upon it. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've touched upon it. It's just uh, a lot of times those characters are so layered and uh, interesting. And their arcs are so fascinating to me because, you know, without them, we wouldn't have these full stories. We wouldn't have these hero journeys. And so they're fascinating characters to dive into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I yeah. just take note that Vincent sounds like, a, you know, a swell guy. He sounds gentle, very like, oh, how, Until how you he bro? turns yeah. his voice oh, on. And then he... I... <laughs> <laughs> and you're like... What? Chill, dog. Chill, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Chill, man. There is a new level of depth to this man. I, I appreciate. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was. It was. Yeah. That was. That was the biggest part, right? So much fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I? Can I? Can I ask? Can I ask Vincent? Do you practice that in the shower, like to make sure you've got any? Echoes going back in, you know, just to make sure you got enough of that grit and your voice. You like... I think it just eats gravel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just gargle nails and you know. Yeah, we actually yeah. we yeah. shared a dietary yeah. plan on that. We you were know. texting back and forth. I'm like, yeah, yeah we yeah. can do like roofing yeah. nails this week and then drywall screws. Yeah, <laughs> no, I you're beating your throat. Good, okay, good, why, good. Because that's why Ross sometimes has his coughing fits. He's he's. Choking on those gravels and those gravels. Yeah. <laughs> spitting up, uh, I'm spitting up pea gravel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, so, and I mean, for you, Josephine, I mean, I, that seems, you know, I mean, Darth Talon is probably one of the most recognized characters in Star Wars. Oh God, the pressure. You know, I know, <laughs> I know, no pressure. <laughs> and dude, her yeah. voice, like, you want to talk about a total 180? Uh, when you hear Josephine oh, yeah. talk, and then she gets yeah. into character, it's like, where the fuck did that? come from mm -hmm. where yeah. is that you've got the some talk, weird obviously. psychotic french like uh, uh, i do it's incredible oh. yes she yes. purrs every line it's a purr yeah that it's like a psychotic french sex so kitten good. that's on <laughs> like bath salts <laughs> that's I the love only it. way like yeah, that's the only way I can describe it. But yes, oh, yeah. so that is, I mean, and 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 one of the things, guys, like, what do you think is, is is why do you think it's so important for us to really make the audience kind of love these characters? Um, you know, what makes it what makes it so imperative for the audience to like really find their love of a villain? I think. I think. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. Yeah, go ahead. Um, honestly, the most obvious one is if you don't got a good villain, the you hero is pointless. Hero. The whole yeah. point of yeah. the, whole, the whole story is absolutely pointless. Uh, pointless. It's just kind of like how awkward would it be if a guy comes in all superhero like, and the dude's just like, "All I did was insult, you know, my sister." You know, like that's not. <laughs> It, it's just a little it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's We're just awkward. Stakes, like, right? <laughs> there's no stakes. There's no risks. 
right? Yeah, for sure. Exactly. And, and it's yeah. not even just that. If you don't have a good, if you don't have a good villain that you like, and the concept of like is so relative because to like someone is either you have they have to hit your sense of humor or your sense of like evil because everybody has their own sense of evil. Some people might yeah. think like running over a, uh, a kid on a bicycle is evil enough that it's just like hilarious or whatever. And other people um, have the kind of concept of mind games on like an office setting and cause drama and they be like, <laughs> and people like that manifestation. So even as a concept of what good villain is a good villain is all relative to the kind of evil that you gravitate to, like your, your sense of sin. And so for me, if, if a villain doesn't incorporate the epitome of manifestation of like your evil desires, because everybody has them, then it's like a part of them is like, I don't want to be the villain, but I also don't want to be the guy that has to deal with the villain because there's nothing there that I feel has to deal with me, you know? Yeah. And so it doesn't engage the story at all. It's just kind of like, cool, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's there's really only three ways to make a villain. There's only three ways to make a villain. Otherwise, it's going to flop. You either have to fear them, respect them, or love them. Those are the only mm -hmm. three ways yeah. to make a convincing villain. And if you don't care yeah. about the villain, you're not really going to care about the hero so much. So you can either 100%. make them so bad, so bad that you fear them and you want them to die. You can respect them in the way, kind of like a Grand Admiral Thrawn, where they're like they're so intelligent uh, that you can't help but kind of respect their motives. Or you can love them, kind of like I always think about like Darth Vader. Like I yeah. love Darth Vader. I mean, you see what mm -hmm. he went through. He's the tragic hero that turned to villain, yeah. and so you love him that way. So there's there's three different ways to make it, but uh, you know more than anything, they have to be cool. And that's something that we yeah. talked about where, you know, as Sharon was saying, where you kind of cast off the shackles, uh, you know, yep. everybody yeah. can kind of relate to wanting to go a little bit psycho sometimes. And so when you see that with somebody else, you're like, go, girl, you. Yeah, <laughs> you be insane. Yeah. Like, I'm feeling yeah. that. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. And I, and I agree. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, I, 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 oh, we lost Josephine. <laughs> She'll come back. Oh, no. <laughs> She'll come back. She's probably yeah. refreshing. Um, but, but is she dead or isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever, no one's ever really gone. <laughs> right? <Ugh. laughs> you knew what you were doing there. I did. <laughs> Look at him. He's, he's like, uh, uh. I just don't. He's in fight Gotta mode. Crack now. the neck. <laughs> But yeah, I think I think you know to, to to have to have a really good villain. Um, you know, I mean, where where would we be with Luke Skywalker if we didn't have Darth Vader? Would we have loved farming moisture? <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Would we would we have loved Darth uh, Luke Luke Skywalker uh, as much as we do if we hadn't had Darth Vader? I don't think so. So, yeah. uh, you know, th the two are very much uh, intertwined and it's so important to have really good arcs for them. And I think with the dark side, you really get to have like, cause it's the unthinkable stuff, right? They, th their background stories can be really just, I mean, you're gonna, you guys are all gonna see the legacy trailer that we have for, for Emperor Vitiate coming. And, uh, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's, uh, you know <laughs> the utter, you know, you can get really, vicious with them and their backstories can be really really great somehow josephine has returned yes <laughs> <laughs> josephine somehow josephine has returned <laughs> yes. yep. yeah so um all right so i think we're gonna uh move on but thank you guys for that uh mm -hmm. i think we're gonna talk a little bit about we haven't even released our first film yet but everyone already knows the three films' titles, so we know the trilogy ends with the Sith at an all-time high. A gutsy move. It will be like ending the original trilogy with Empire Strikes Back. What are your thoughts around that? All right, guys. What do you think? Yeah. Do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. Let the bad guys win for once, please. Let the bad guys. guys win. 
<laughs> that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, yeah, like buck the trend. There is definitely um, there is a format for the the three movie in in Hollywood. There's a format for a trilogy. Um, if you can successfully buck that trend and change the way a trilogy can work, uh, more power to you, dude. And to be honest with you, like everybody loves a cliffhanger. If you're going to write a TV series, like I always think about, mm -hmm. you know, Breaking Bad, like if you yes. end on like, holy shit, what's going to happen? People are coming back for the second one. Like it's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, always ending a movie on like a positive note, super lame. Always ending it on a negative note, super lame. But if you can figure out how to bring people back in for the second movie, which is exactly like what this it. is going to do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And especially important for smaller projects like this, if you if you end with a resolution kind of like kind of like a new hope did, it's you know, there's less incentive to come back unless it's a masterpiece like a new hope, you know, which yeah. is a very high level to try to, you know, yeah. Yeah. and I think new hope yeah. was written the way it was written because Lucas had no idea Correct. how audience were going to receive it. So he yeah. had to yeah. somehow make it a whole story but there's still possibilities in case it does work out. <laughs> right. Yes. And yeah. and yeah. notice how notice how when he absolutely knew it would work out, right? Uh, you know, we He didn't even know an empire, bro. He, yeah. Luke and Leia, we're making out, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he ended with Revenge of the Sith in yeah. the prequels cuz he absolutely knew it was going to work out. So like yeah. it, it, once he knew it was gonna work out, people are gonna want more. They're gonna, you know, he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end with 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 the dark. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take it really dark." And we I had Anakin do. killing younglings, and we loved it. <laughs> and we absolutely yeah. loved it, right? <laughs> oh, look, it's Gerald. Hi, Gerald. Hello, Gerald. Hey, Gerald. Hey, Gerald. That's our Lando Calrissian, everybody. We will have a a light side part uh, coming up soon too. So. Uh, and that is when the dark side comes in and calls chaos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to oh, hack yes. the stream and Josephine so and I are, are going to being good out. right now and giving our space, but we yes. won't. <laughs> Just wait till we're the ones in the chat box. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? yes. Oh, wow. So, yeah, uh, I think, I think you know, one of the things, I mean, we've had a lot of chatter. There's been some chatter in the comments. There's been chatters and DMs and things like that, where it's like, oh, are you guys really going to, like go there i'm like we're going there <laughs> you know oh yeah and oh, there's you know, not enough bodies in this movie we need more no. i mean dude yeah. stuff i mean like if you've ever seen ghost ship watch the first scene like some stuff yeah. it's it, bro it gets yeah. it gets gnarly and that's so cool too because you know generally obviously disney's the person running the company right the person the entity running the 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 ip don't think you're ever gonna get anything gruesome from mm -hmm. disney nope but in a world where light swords can cut people in half, they should cut people in half. In half. <laughs> As decree. Now, now do that in the movie phone guy voice. In a world. In a world. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, for sure. And I, you know, and the thing is, is that it's also just, you know, when we talk about episode 12, which a lot of you guys, I mean, I mean, I don't even have a script for it yet. I have a treatment. For all, I have a plan for all three, you know, the, Wait, um, unlike some people, huh? unlike you some doing? people, <laughs> <What you doing? laughs> all right, I have a plan for all three and I have a trilogy treatment, but you know, I don't have a script for 12. Um, no, but, you know, Maria, the little passage you had me read was pretty, uh, I, 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 I enjoyed it. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, we can get into, we'll, we'll get into it because, you know, I mean, you know, there's a little, there's a little something, something between Elian and Dark Talon there. But, but nonetheless, I mean, like, you know, when we get to 12, 12 gets very dark and, you know, some younglings will be slayed. Just uh, <laughs> big so. fan. I actually got the tool he did it with back there. What is King, King's, King's huh. calls it something? He, he said, yeah, he like, said it's the Youngling it, Slayer 9000. The Youngling Slayer 9000. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's the canon. Yes name for yeah. it. I feel like that's what I that, that's what I should uh, whip out whenever my nephews are being bad. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> They'll listen. <laughs> They'll listen. They'll be like, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Finna die, child? 
<laughs> I grew absolutely. up on this. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So I, I, and the thing is, is I think that you know, in my mind, the way I have episode twelve ending, it's such a like, it's the end, but it's a beginning. <laughs> and so, dun, dun, dun. Dun. not to right. get too much though, right? Not to you know, too not too much, but I mean, it's really and and you know, I mean, the the bad guys stay bad, and you know, they they don't make it. They don't make it back ever to, well, some of these folks were never on the good side, <laughs> but, 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 you know. Poor uh, shame. Folks, Everyone yeah. needs a redemption arc. Don't you know that we're all inherently good? <laughs> no, no. And, and, like and, and the thing, you know, and, and, and the great thing about it is, is, you know, I'm leaving that whole premise, that whole redemption arc premise is about to get absolutely blown apart. It will be blown apart in 12 because... We have somebody who kind of engulfs that for us in Ben Solo. I know. <laughs> but I just imagine Solo, it's pronounced Swolo. Swolo. <laughs> I just imagine Swolo. somebody coming up to tell him and be like, you could be good. And then she just cuts off his hand. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yes and so okay, we, we you're have missing we, something no, no wait I, no. i'm no, already very good at and what i do you Thank can't you. type <laughs> <laughs> right you know and so we we have somebody that really can can embody that redemption arc story and we leave it with him and he you know a lot of what we're telling is 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 this you know his his redemption basically continued right because i think i thought yeah. you know having ben solo be redeemed just like his freaking grandfather was uh, such a cop out. just just a cop out really i mean come on you know let's put him through the ringer mm -hmm. and believe me when i tell you we put him through the ringer and i think it's just that 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 makes it so much he's going to be such an interesting character and what i hope is that all our viewers, including our cast and everything, you know, really change their minds or, you know, really embrace Ben Solo because they've received a complete, you know, atonement. It's not just redemption, it's what he's having to do after. I gotta tell you, like, as a yeah. sequel detractor, like- Detractor? That's yeah, if a great you're, word. That's PG if you're term. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're talking about like a, a character that I really wish I would have seen more of, it's the son of a Skywalker and a Solo. Like, what a great mm -hmm. way to to kind of bring the original trilogy back in and, and carry yeah. on the, the legacy. And like, dude, for the, I don't know, three minutes and 45 seconds that we got Ben, I was like, this is what I want. This is this what is I what wanted I want. for the entire thing. This is what I wanted the what? entire time. And he starts killing people and you're like, yes! I was I was so excited. And then it's like, nah, fam, he's gone. No. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah like, did. well, you know what? Fuck you too. Fuck you too. <laughs> All right. And we get to do that with this film. We get to do yeah. that with this whole trilogy. We get to see him really get, you know, I mean, the poor guy gets you know thrown to the wolves and he has yeah. to you know he has to kind of cr crawl back uh, you know we we watched him crawl back up to save ray but you know that's not the end of his journey as far as crawling is and we have somebody that can embody that redemption so i don't need another one so everybody can stay bad <laughs> yeah you know so he's kind of like the sacrificial lamb x yeah <laughs> I just keep thinking about like the, the only good five minutes of the entire sequel trilogy. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, ben when you ben, think about ben it, so it, yeah, Ben Solo versus the Knights of Ren, right? That was so. We were yeah. like, yeah. And even that, it could have been, could have been, still could have been so much better. I know. Yep. Yep. It, even with Vader, his redemption was so short lived. He's like, I, I did the right thing. I saved my son. Boom, you're dead. Yeah. I didn't yeah. mind that. I didn't mind that. You know, which, which was a beautiful way to end that character. Yeah. I wouldn't want to see him, you know, go through the arc that we're giving Ben. But ben, yeah, Ben's like 25. Yeah. 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 Anakin was at the end. Like yeah. that was supposed to be the end. Like Ben oh, right. Ben has so much left to do. Yeah. I totally yeah. forgot that they were that young. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ben Ben was uh 30 years old. And, oh, he's thirty. Yeah. yeah, he's thirty. He's ten years. He's ten years older than Ray, and Ray's twenty. And um, 
you know, I mean, Luke Skywalker was 19 mm -hmm. when we first met him in A New Hope. Um, you know, so, and so was Ray. Ray was also 19. Funny. <laughs> We get a little more original. Um, but, you know. You're such a grifter. I know. Totally. <laughs> totally. But yeah, so I, and, and that's the thing, you know, I really want to impress, you know, uh, that, you know, it's all cyclical, right? Everything, you know, yes. if we, Star Wars, that's the poetry of Star Wars is that it's cyclical and it's meant to repeat itself because humans keep making the same mistakes. That's a George yeah. quote. Look it up. <laughs> um, and I, so, I'll say it. I'll, I've said it a million times. I'll say it again. They should have followed what Legend of Zelda did. Mm -hmm. There is always going to be a hero of time, a hero of the wind, a hero of whatever you want to call it. It's always going to be the same. It's always going to keep happening. And I will always buy my butt in a seat to watch it if you just follow that formula there's nothing wrong with it yeah he is he is kings <laughs> but hey at least she's legal <laughs> oh christ that is your guy that is your guy you know what's funny guy i was is? gonna say that and then i'm like better not not appropriate for the stream and then you <laughs> highlighted the comment you know? I have been trying to hold it in, Marie. I'm just saying. I'm just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> what have you been holding in? Let it all out, girl. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You, no, no, no. We can't do that online. Not online. Not online, Maria. <laughs> all right, guys. All right. So let's talk a little bit about uh, a, prof a profession type of thing. We're going to go and talk about. We had well over a thousand entries for the roles we are including in this film. We meticulously combed through all of the submissions over several months. Some were direct casts, and others had to audition for their roles. How was that experience, and what could have been done better? <laughs> Everything's a blur for you, X. Shut up! <laughs> that, that he auditioned when he was drinking. I live in the prison. I live in the prison, you know? Yeah, so let's talk about that. I mean, some of you I guys were Vegas, direct. I, 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 you know, some of you guys were directly cast. Sharon, I, yeah. I immediately heard her voice, and I said, "That's Ellie and Zara." And there was just no one else. I, I didn't audition anybody else. I didn't do. So I said, "I said you're it, girl," and she was like, "Okay." <laughs> was like, she had really? no idea what she was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember that email, right? She just had no idea what she was getting into. Oh, she just yeah. knew. Listen, I, I said, "How did you? How did? How did we find each other? Was it through Tyler's Discord? I think it, it was through Tyler. Um, he posted it. Tyler I think he Western posted Western. it on Twitter. Yeah, and that's I didn't where even I know you guys knew Tyler before. Um, oh yeah, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I followed his link, and the audition scripts were there. And I started looking through and it's like, okay, I can't do a Ray voice. I can't do a Leia voice. I can't do this voice. Oh, look, there are some people who haven't been spoken yet. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, okay, I can kind of do Maz Kanata. So I put in for Maz. And there were some others that I did. I, I mean, I was to the point where I want to be a part of this, even if I have one line and I that's it somewhere I just I want to be in on this and you know when Maria contacted me said we're gonna cast you as Ellie and it's like jaw drops <laughs> because all it was was sending in recordings to you I hadn't had you know the screen test process that we did for everyone who was subsequent Tyler and I were the first two cast Mm -hmm. And we were both like, do you know how this is going to work? I have no idea. Do you know how it's going to work? No, not a clue. <laughs> I've never and, done and, this before, you and me both. Right. right. And, and and Tyler, you know, while he does do like voices, it was never in this scale. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. And so I think that was kind of a similar experience that you guys, you, you and him both share. Um, yeah. And we had worked together um, mm -hmm. in the audio dramatized uh, Dark Disciple series. 
So he was Voss and I was Ventress. So we knew how to play off of each other. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, you know, that's great just being, you know, being that Tyler Weston is Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> you know. So yeah. <laughs> having that 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 is 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 absolutely great. I think, you know, and then and then to for Darth Nil and 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 Darth Talon. Um and even, you know, Emperor Vitiate. We had so many people <laughs> submit. Like I said, the dark side, oh my god. <laughs> right? Everybody, like wants, everybody it. wants yeah. everybody wants to be a bit of the dark side, right? So uh, we had so many submissions in for Darth Nell. Uh, so Vincent, if you can talk a little bit about your, you know, your experience through that, and also let me know, like, what can we do better going into like casting for the TV show and casting for Eleven and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, for me, I came from a theater, live theater and a film background, and I was looking to get into VO. And so it was pretty uh, random for me. I was on IMDb, IMDb Pro, and I submitted because obviously mm -hmm. Dark Side, I'm uh, going to submit for that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I can't remember exactly what I read for, but I, I, I read for it and um, you got in contact and we start kind of communicating back and forth and you're like, I'm actually thinking of you for Darth Nil because I think I read for someone different, but I might be wrong about that. Um, I think you might have read and, for Ben uh, Solo, actually. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think the whole process took a very long time, so a lot... I think, I think initially, yeah, I just kind of yeah. sent it in because I wasn't sure. I was like, is this supposed to sound like this Ben Solo, like the actual Ben Solo? You know, I was yeah, like, I'm just yeah. going to kind of put my foot in the door and see what happens and uh yeah i mean it the whole process took a really long time so i wasn't i kind of forgot about it and then like a couple months later it's like oh yeah uh we're gonna we're gonna cast you and i was just like oh great awesome love it um yeah so i i didn't i like this is a pretty vo work it's uh, a pretty new realm for me so i don't have like any like oh this should be different or this should be better um really notes but i enjoy the process because i've learned so much about this part of the craft that i don't have as much as as much experience yeah. in uh, so that's been a, a yeah quite a pleasure yeah guys me. we have some bona fide actors like real theater and sta you know, stage actors and film actors uh you know yeah. we have people who have been on broadway that are part of this cast so uh, it's incredible it's, a, it's crazy right <laughs> it's absolutely crazy and how about and, you Ross? and we have people who auditioned for one thing and were cast for something completely different because we yes. said you know why don't you try this yep yep absolutely uh so and ross i mean you and i i mean we we knew each other before that but but you know you did kind of go up against other folks you did actually have an audition process yeah yeah <laughs> Why does Rob say it like that? What happened? I, it was insane. Like, I just, so I remember it was like after a live stream one night, you're like, bro, I got so many voice submissions. Like, do you want to look over some of these? Like, tell me what you think. Because, you know, we've yes. been talking about what you were doing. And, and, uh, at some I think point, it, I as, think I was, I think I was, I, I remember this because I think we were struggling with the casting of Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Because, uh, and the, we the, were the listening through was, the voices. Luke, yeah. Yeah, Gar Rogers, who Garland Rogers, who plays, who now plays Luke Skywalker, hadn't submitted yet. So we were yeah. just like going through all those submissions, and we weren't really happy with like a Most lot of, the of them, right? And then uh, some, uh, I don't remember what it was, but uh, uh, there's like a point of pride for me that this thing kind of came about the same way Harrison Ford got Han Solo. Yeah, was that I was reading along, and then you're like, you know, you're like, hey, let me try this. You know, uh, I can read for Vitiate, and then I did it. And uh, and you were like, hold that thought. Give me one second. I'll be right back. <laughs> and then I think you talked to your husband. You talked to your husband, and you're like, I think maybe we should try. To, we should maybe try yes. to get this guy. Yes, like Jake it. is in the chat. So yes. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And so um, so yeah, I did it. I auditioned, and then I remember you guys like drastically changed the voice, because the first one that I did. Uh, I went into a meeting with you and then there were a couple other cast members and they were mm -hmm. like, bro, you got to bring the gravel way back. Way down. Yeah. Way yeah. back. <laughs> I remember yeah. that. Way back. Chris, I think, yeah, Chris, you were in that. Yeah. I was there. You were there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there, 
everybody's like, yeah, just let's let's tone the gravel down. And then I don't remember who it was. They were like, okay, now I'm now I'm sure. That's that's the one. That's the one we got to do. Oh man, I wish yeah. I was there to hear it. I would have totally yeah. loved to hear it. It was it was so Sharon, cool. It was great to have Sharon be one of the first ones that we cast because we literally we literally had her you know go into the auditions as a mirror. So for those of you who yeah. don't yeah. know. Uh, mirrors are casted people the people that are cast in your film can be asked to mirror for an audition meaning so that that person that's auditioning has someone to act against because it brings out the best in that audition I'm sure Vincent can can speak to that as as he is a physical actor uh, and so so that I think that process was great because once we got Sharon in in uh, and to do that with with him with Ross, uh, it was great because we we you know we were like yep, that's the one. And I mean Sharon, sh you know Sharon knows because Sharon was part of the she mm -hmm. was a mirror for all the other Emperor yeah. shoots we got. Yeah, and we yeah. were like yeah. the, the chemistry between Sharon and X was so great, and we yeah, were like that, that's that was me. what finally decided it yeah. was yeah, you, know, the, the, you know you mm know. -hmm. Oh my god! It has it. to be X. It, it, has, it to has to be. It has to be. Yeah, yes. we were, oh, yeah we we got along really well and um like dude to do what you're doing in this is I mean like all all props in the world to Sharon I uh, you know we tried it multiple different ways to see if we could make it work but eventually like you have to go with the person who's like way better at this to try to to try to mirror what the other person is doing. Yes. Um, and it's it's really incredible. It's yes, incredible. because I mean, I'm you know, and I'm, I'm I might be giving a little bit away, but you know, you know, the reason we say that Sharon and, and X are two halves of one whole is because you know, X in his character, he's still kind of disembodied, and so he's kind of you know toying with with trying to get himself to be whole again, and that's kind of one of the big. Uh, plots of the movie is he wants to he wants to uh, be uh, human again and well not human it doesn't matter <laughs> to him but he wants to physical. be powerful physical. yeah he wants to be in physical, corporeal physical. corporeal that is that corporeal. is the there you go. that's the one yeah, yeah, yeah. that's my twenty five cent word for today <laughs> <laughs> all right well guys I think we are going to uh, let's see if I, if I think uh, we can we had well. Type in your questions in the chat and we'll try to answer them. Some questions may be behind NDAs, so not all questions can be answered, or we may just simply run out of time today. If so, drop your questions in the comments. Who you had before, because you, uh, you had talent filled in beforehand, oh. remember? Uh, no, I, mm. you auditioned for talent and you were like, I think what it was, and I'll, I'll, I'll just to kind of pick up a little bit, uh, at the tail end of that, but, um, you know, the, we had one person, Joni Machado, who auditioned for talent. Um, and, and she was, I mean, you inched her out just an inch i was um, a big proponent yeah. for joe just gonna go ahead and say that i was a <laughs> yes, big fan yes. for joe i yes. was like this yes. is perfect <laughs> yes yes for sure uh a lot of people were like yeah no 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 uh josephine it's uh, gonna yeah, be joe that's it's, yeah, gonna, it's joe. gonna be joe uh and so but but there was a lot of folks who really liked johnny machado and we ended up casting her as darth Malati. Yeah. Uh, yeah and yes. she fell into that Perfectly. So I mean, like a yes. duck to oh, water. Wow. Man. Yes. Yeah. 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 Especially Honestly, because she really... uh, Go ahead. Honestly, uh, the, um, the only thing that I wanted, not going to lie, was talent. And so when I heard, it was like, oh, I think we already got talent filled. So we, we oh, yeah. like, mm -hmm. probably going to have you audition for Melody. I'm like, oh. No. <laughs> but I still want in, so I'll do it. And then when you yeah. said, oh, actually. We're I mean, Johnny. the moment we heard you. From the moment we heard you, yeah, we were like, yeah, oh. that was it, that was it. My but girl. for some, My and, and that, and we were, so, you know, we we were just sold on that. But we also recognized the talent that Johnny brought, and yeah, uh, and we we were like, okay, we can't let her go. 
You know, She's got that, like this perfect, slight Russian, Eastern European, yeah. like very slight yeah, Eastern totally. European. That's just like it drips Sith. Mm. And, 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 and there's just, something about the way on her delivery. There's a seriousness to it, but it's still very like yes. hidden. Yes. You know, like yeah. it's she has a mystery. She's mysterious. That's the word. Yes. Yeah, yes. like yes. kind of a dick. Yes, kind of a dick. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, and then it's so sure. funny because we we hop out of like we'll hop out of rehearsals or we're, we'll hop out and then she's like, you know, I'm from Mel America. I like potatoes and you know bacon and all that stuff. <laughs> I'm like Johnny, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what was it? It was like a potato and mayonnaise festival or something going on in her town. Do you remember that? I remember that actually. She yeah. tweeted about it. Too. Yeah, it was like potato and mayo festival. She's great. Okay, Funny. we have started the Q&A, guys. So send in your questions. Let me know, and I'll highlight them on here. Uh, you know, send me the questions. So uh, blooper reel happening, right? Post production. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. We need to get through. Yeah. We need to get through all of the lines because there's so many. We still need to get through uh edit I can and feel uh, the weight of chris's work as he's yes. saying these things yeah. there is there is yeah. so much to do it's There's like so oh much. god it's so much i, I mean we, we, we come fun. up with little bits right and when i we've published yeah. some of the little ones like the one where 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 it was x and johnny and they were in rehearsal <laughs> and they were and johnny yeah. all of a sudden out of nowhere she drops into like this real southern accent <laughs> And then you had X. Yeah. Remember this X? And you were no. like, is that a Pataluna accent? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they start talking in like the accent, and we're just like, Maya, oh, what wow. are you talking about there? <laughs> and we yeah, were still was recording, crazy. was like, this is gold. This is gold. <laughs> yeah. That's kind yeah. of, that was like the most beautiful thing about this whole experience is like, dude, we had so much fun doing this. Yeah. Oh, it was have. so yeah. fun. Never felt like work at any point ever. Nope. Mm -hmm. And it was just it a lot of, and, fun. and it, it's just and it's just a great learning experience because Maria really does things in 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 the whole like process of it, which I have never seen nor have I ever heard of it. So I was just like, "This is legit," and yeah. I'm sorry for my language, but holy shit! I was just like, <laughs> I printed every copy, and I literally still have it on my table because I'm just like, I know these are supposed to be drafts, but. I'm gonna, I'm gonna frame them. <laughs> I could, I, there's no way I could work with another director other than Maria because they wouldn't yeah. put up yeah. with my shit. <laughs> they probably would not. Maria has, Maria has <laughs> definitely <laughs> spoiled us. Just, just the the ability to hop into the the art meetings and the the you know mm. cooperate corroborate whatever the word is. Oh on yes, some of the scripts <laughs> that doesn't happen. No. You know, mm -hmm. in, in voice work, you get the script, you record your lines, you send them in, and you don't hear anything until the project is posted. It's like, yeah. uh, it's like that I for physical that. acting. That was Ask like, Vince. Like, it's like that for physical <laughs> acting. Like Vince, a... right? Am I right? You'll you you'll be filming. You'll be filming, and you'll have film days for three, four weeks or whatever, and then you're done, and then you just don't hear anything else until it's press time, right? <laughs> which it's where you are right now right <laughs> trying to yeah uh, no it's, to... it's been it's been a <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no it's been a real pleasure it, i i've it's been like a breath of fresh air being able to be so connected with every aspect of the project and it just kind of feels like a family and i think that actually pulls better performances and work out of everybody uh yeah. so yeah, yeah so much fun yeah. yeah. All right. We've got one. Our first question comes in from Nathaniel River. With more Star Wars content coming, any other new characters you'd consider adding? He wants, yeah. to, he wants to give up your plans, Maria. <laughs> I know, right? He wants to get deep. Um, well, you know, uh, uh, I, and I, I kind of hinted at this before, so I'm not afraid to, like, really go there. Um, you know, um, I... Ginger. Ginger, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I I definitely have plans for Cal Kestis to make a, a, a an entrance in episode eleven. Uh, he will be very old because of the timelines. Okay, uh, and so you know he will be in his seventies, uh, and he will be there with you know he's basically a Grand Master Jedi at this point. 
Um, I'd be the and... last living survivor of Order 66 at that point. Probably. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so I think that's super interesting, right? Yeah. And and to have him actually be physically present, because of course, I mean, we have Luke, we have Anakin, we have, you know, we have all the Force ghosts, right? Uh, but we we to have actually someone be physically present and physically taking the lead and helping Anakin to like mold, you know, everybody. Uh, you know, I think is just super, super interesting. And the fact that, uh, you know, we bring him in and he is a Grandmaster Jedi and he is married, right? Which I know King Kings is going to kill me. Kings is going to be like, no, no, <laughs> right? But, um, but yes, to bring him in and have him be married, he, he is married to Marin at this point in my story anyway. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know Subtle. but and, and, but being being able to to also play around with the night sisters and the night sister powers and and be able to you know make them actually make sense that's that's a challenge i was willing to willing to take so there is some of that coming uh you know and we'll see some of that uh, possibly nathaniel in 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 you know in the tv series there might be some some you know episodes where he he comes in but there is, there is certainly plans for you have to also remember that this trilogy the essential um key element of this trilogy is to pass the baton right and to pass it on from ben and ray over into a new generation of skywalkers right and and to really dive into that and to do that in a way that not only makes sense but respects George Lucas's work and also doesn't discount all of the fans because we do have a lot of Star Wars sequel fans. You know, yeah. they get to be included in that with us. I really feel like that's where we can meet everybody on an even playing field. And, you know, it's going to be in the future. It's never going to be about the past, right? Like it's never, it's never going to, we're never going to agree, <laughs> but we can agree on a future that has a baton that's been properly passed. Um, so there's always going to be new characters and, and things like that. So, and we will definitely be putting out when we do have new characters and stuff like that, we'll definitely be pulling up, putting up call sheets, uh, you know, casting calls, sorry, call sheets. I have that in my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, casting calls out on uh, Casting Call Club, Backstage, IMDb. We use all Unless the I tools. get there first. <laughs> <laughs> we use all of the tools. We do, do offer up new roles to anybody that, so we take care of our extras very well here as well. So like if there's a role that opens up, I will let our extras audition for that first exclusively. So, to, so that we can bump them up into main cast. So we do that quite a lot uh, here. So we take care of anybody that's an extra. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at those folks, but also anybody that maybe their character has died. <laughs> like dead, dead, like really dead, right? And we'll, we'll offer them uh, those first dibs first, but anything else beyond that gets put on our, on our website and uh, you'll be sure to see those on there. Dibs on playing uh, Chewbacca's wife. <laughs> Chewbacca. Mm -hmm. I think oh you got to have to fight Susan for that one. She wants. <laughs> what is her name? I can't remember her name. Maz Kanata? No. Yeah. No. Oh my god! I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm out. I'm done. Um. God and always, Maria. King's, King's <laughs> advisors has the next question. He's like, "What did it mean to each person to be able to add something to this universe? Universe that has meant so much to each of you." We'll start with Chris. Um. Well, that's a good question. Uh, me to add, uh, be able to add something to this universe that meant so much to me. Um. Well, well, I mean. Because when I first found this project, I stumbled upon it on Casting Call Club. I was looking for uh, things to audition for. And I just kind of stumbled across it and was like, oh, Star Wars, I'll have a look. And when I found it, the only character that I could, that was left the open audition still, was um, Lando Calrissian. And I was like, well, I, I can't do that. I just yeah, can't oh, do on, Lando Calrissian. It would have been great. <laughs> 
It's like I clearly cannot do Lando Calrissian. I just can't pull off that smoother kind of voice. Um, and so, but then I looked further down and I was like, oh, it's looking for an uh, audio engineer, sound designer, Foley artist. I was like, there's something I could apply for. Um, and so I went in for it thinking, you know, just the, the, the typical voiceover things and then forget. Yes. And when I ended up getting the role, I was like, oh my God, I've, 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 I'm working in a job Shit. where I. Can... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Darn it. I, like, I well, actually hey, got just... it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh my God. No, I really have to work hard because I really have to do absolutely <laughs> everything I can to mimic those sounds as best as I can. No. To... When did you when did you realize you bit more than you could chew? Um, I don't. I still think that has to go. <laughs> I, yeah, I, he's chewing. Um, when when he learning, starts yeah. having yeah, he's to edit, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I start but... learning something else every day, and like mm -hmm. every time I approach one of these the sounds that I need to make, um, I'll do uh, an, an initial a rough edit, and I'll put it onto the onto our. Uh, like network our teams and see what people think and then get some feedback and go okay i'll make these changes make some more changes and then put a second and a third and basically just the the, the each of the sounds that are really important that i need to get perfected i keep getting the feedback on until i get the thumbs up from everybody and go okay right you're all happy with that i'm happy with it and we can move on to something else and uh yes yeah, just been a real, uh, a real pleasure and real honor to be able to do something for a franchise that I have loved for as long as I can remember. It's yes, amazing. Yeah. And uh, X, how about you? I mean, <laughs> we're gonna end this show with your Star Wars theme. So oh God. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's super weird. So. Uh, I spend every day surrounded by Star Wars. You know, my Star Wars room is my office. It's my YouTube channel. It's everything I do. I've loved these stories since I was just knee high to a grasshopper. I've, you know, I've loved them forever. So, you know, in any capacity, whether it's, you know, a fan film like this or a, a billion dollar movie, like it really doesn't matter. Just being a part of it is what makes me super freaking happy. And the fact that I get to be the prime dickhead out of anybody, <laughs> it's just like, it's so incredible. And especially like, it's when I stop to think about it, it scares the shit out of me that like, I have to try to embody one of the coolest characters to ever exist in Star Wars. That scares the crap out of me. It's um, like it's like it's like trying to embody Revan, right? Like Yeah, you know, like what be... do you do? And then you just dig really deep down and you're like, man, if I just was the biggest dick on the planet, how would I act? And it turns out every man has the capacity to do that. So I just dug <laughs> right down into that part and I was like, yep. run with it and let's do it, man. Let's, let's do, do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So yeah. it's been you know, it's been incredible. You know, listening to obviously my other you know, my, my everybody in the cast and the amazing talent that they bring. There are people who are just absolutely incredibly, incredibly talented working on this mm -hmm. movie. And then beyond that, you know, Chris with with the sound and then obviously Vince with the music and everything that's going on. This is there are so many different moving cogs. And like just to be one tooth in that gear is fucking awesome. <laughs> Excuse my French, but like no, it's just totally. so cool. Yeah. And I can't like I legitimately like I cannot wait to see this thing come to life. And mm -hmm. I have to wonder like, is this what like a Hollywood actor feels like when they're you know they do their small bit, and then at some point in like a year and a half or two years, that shit's on screen, right? And this you're like, oh, that's you. what the whole thing was. Like, holy shit, that's <laughs> like I never imagined. Yeah, yes, it can tell you that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy so i've just i've had way too much fun i've met way too many good people i've uh, mm -hmm. you know the whole experience has been incredible and holy shit i'm in a star wars project <laughs> there you go i know yeah. <laughs> yes and sharon really, you... uh, sorry <laughs> go ahead oh. josephine 
Yeah, go uh, ahead, I just go like ahead. when you when you said that you found it intimidating, I, I literally that's my first initial thought because it's so intense to play someone so very very bad. And I don't know about you, Ross, but I try to be a good person twenty four seven. No, I'm kidding. I try. <laughs> <laughs> to try not very hard but i'm sure <laughs> no, but, um it's uh, me personally uh with talent honestly when i when i because like i've read the comics and obviously she's so she manifests so much confidence and energy and like i own the world kind of thing that the really interesting thing about even auditioning for her she never appeared anywhere on any of the major uh, works, she's not there, which baffles my mind because yeah. how could you hide someone like her who is very forward like that? And so being able to even play her because I've always loved her concept and her, her character, uh, it's just like, I have to be probably one of the first to put emphasis on what and how she would sound and how she would play and how she would yeah. you know act and all these things that has absolutely no reference and in some cases that's that's an it's a great thing because you know nobody compares or copies or all that stuff but in another sense it's so fucking intimidating sorry excuse my french um <laughs> you know and, and i've always been kind of like like this which is like happy and just kind of like super excited about everything and so when i got the news and i got the email i'm like i kid you not I went, I screamed. I didn't swear. I just ran around the house going, ah! <laughs> and, and all my family members says, what's going on? I'm like, I'm going to be on Star Wars. <laughs> yes. 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 Like, I went on the Oscar on them. Like, thank you so much. Yeah. And I just want to cut in and say, uh, say, I just want to cut in into that and say, you know, we have Red Sun here. Red Sun is our Yoda. I've never met a better Yoda. Incredible Honestly. Yoda. Incredible Yoda. Yoda. And I do want to give a little shout out to Vincent Catalina. He did message me and said he's going to have to like skedaddle out of here soon. So we'll let him go. But uh, Sharon, let's talk, let's finish with you. And let's just say, you know, what, what is it like for you to be on this project? What are, you know, what, you know, how does, how does it feel? You know? Well, you know, First off, ditto to everything X and Joe have said. Yeah. You know, like, I'm in a real Star Wars. Oh my God. <laughs> the f my family was never much for going to movies. So Empire Strikes Back was the first film I ever saw in a theater. I went with my brother and his friends and I was the little sister tag along. Mm. <laughs> and I was so in love. So when Return of the Jedi came out, I begged my dad because the theater that was in my hometown was third run. So let's, you know, backtrack a little for you youngins who don't know what that means. You had first run theaters that got films when they were released and then second run after it had been six months in the first run theaters, it would go to the second run. And when everybody had forgotten about it, then it would go to the third run theaters. So, I mean, it was great. There was no line to get in. But, <laughs> you know, that that's where I went, my tiny little hometown theater. And I was not going to do that again. So when Return of the Jedi came out, I begged my dad, please, 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 we've got to see this because I wasn't driving yet. We had to go across state lines. <laughs> we got there. The line went around the block. What? And we just, you know, we were able to get a seat. <laughs> and I mean, my dad's a very stoic person. Yeah. God rest his soul. Love him to pieces. But this was not his genre. Okay. Right. He, he was, you know, Sunday school teacher, good, you know, stalwart, faithful man. Yeah. And he took me to see Re uh, Return of the Jedi. Let's go. And, you know, I was in the theater like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So as we left, I said, Dad, what'd you think? It was different. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? That, That's great. That's fine. That's awesome. And you know yeah, what? Yeah, we'll take that. To now have it come 
so many years later <coughs> uh, to be a part of it. It's like, oh my gosh, this is real. I can't believe I'm going to get paid to be in Star Wars and have this much fun. Yep, yep, yes, yes. And can I just give a, a hat go tip away. to the art department? Their work just jaw dropping. Yeah. To watch AJ during the, the... breakdown with his sketches. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make spot. sense to me. The first yes. time she brought me in, I'm like, is he doing that live? Is that like live? As, and Wait, I'm like, yeah, that's live. Like, that, that's like, oh, that's yeah, live. no, Story he's Storyboard's dude, live, yep, yep. Incredible. Yep. Like, mm -hmm. you would expect somebody like that to be at, like, Marvel or something as mm -hmm. they're making, yeah. like, they are drawing detailed scenes as people are talking about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't Absolutely. make a fucking yeah. smiley face. And then we like... have Filmari, <laughs> who's doing animation. <laughs> And I mean, I'd worked with Valmari before on a motion comic to mm -hmm. see him doing this, which is so much richer so much and more, more than, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, dude, you were wasted on those comics. You are too good for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Incredible sure. talent. Yeah. All packed yeah. into this tiny little awesome tuna can, man. I'm so excited. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I'll finish with, with, with a question from DWJ Grinwald. Is that, that is that, it that is. is, it is. Okay. I have to say, it's, it's a very unique last name, so it must be The cat has a family. computer? The cat has a computer. <laughs> it would say Darth Well, yes, Kittius. it's actually Darth Kittius in the next yeah. room. <laughs> uh, there are rumors that Disney may sell the Star Wars franchise in order to raise cash to meet contractual commitments they made with Comcast for Hulu. If so, how would this affect this? How would that affect this project? Zero <laughs> would not affect this project at all because this is a yeah, fan. And they're film. not selling Star Wars. And they're not selling Star and Wars. Who <laughs> put the freaking thing out there that George Lucas is going to buy Star Wars back? Go have a cup did of coffee. Did you see him? Did you see him at Indy? I mean, come on. We're He's on not buying legs. it back. You guys are out of your minds. Whoever's I mean, saying he literally that, just... needed help to get off the stage. He's not in any condition. No, but I you know. can Nobody you can run you it. can run Lucasfilm from a wheelchair. That's not the problem. Like the I whole know, reason but... he sold it was to get away from it, so he could do whatever the hell else he wanted. He wanted yeah. to do right, and also just I you know I, there's just too much money at stake. And Disney has way too many things that would require licensure that they don't have to pay anymore because they own Star Wars. I can't yeah. imagine them seeing it's too much stuff. Life. It's imagine, an ugly mess. I mean, imagine having to pay licensure for Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, you've got parks oh. already built. You've got loads of merch lines, stuff going on with Marvel Comics. There's, I mean, stuff that's I going mean, on with Hasbro. There's, too, it's there's too muddy. Too, yeah, it's way, and they would never sell that. They would, they're never going to sell Marvel. They're never going to sell Star Wars. And I was talking about this a little bit with Kings last night. Um, you know, Disney Entertainment is the biggest entertainment company in the world. In the world. Yeah. Like, in the world, bro. Like, honestly, out of the top 10 the grossing films of all time, all time, they own eight. <laughs> that kind of fruit footprint uh, there's just no way that this like you talk about too big to fail, right? There's four billion too big wasn't to fail. enough. Yeah, I mean honestly, they could probably lose ten billion dollars a year and still be okay. I mean, <laughs> you know, so I'm not worried about uh, you know them needing cash. Are they needing cash? Yes, they are. They're they're not doing well financially. Uh, but it's never been a better time to put Bob Iger at the top. That's for sure. If Listen, Bob Iger is terrible for Star Wars, but amazing for Disney. What? <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is, dude, the parks are always going to be the one that makes the money. Parks yeah, are yeah. always going to be the one that make the money. But when you have yeah. 207 in working capital, you run into an issue. So the only theoretical, plausible, could happen, maybe somewhere in the stars somewhere, is that essentially Apple could ascertain an entertainment division of disney i.e lucasfilm and leave it still essentially run by disney yeah 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 you leave everything in place so when people yeah. are like oh my god it's gonna sell guess what nothing changes nothing yep. changes yeah 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 the money and, just goes to a different account and and, <laughs> and i mean people have to understand i mean kk's at the helm 
whether Lucasfilm is owned by Disney or Paramount or it, you know, they're not going to just immediately. Yeah, no, they're not going to just immediately. And and here's the thing: I know people call call for her removal quite a lot. I, right, right? There's so many people that say, "Oh, KK's got to get out." But I'm more afraid of who they would put in. I'll yeah. be honest. Like I'll stick with the le- the devil I know. I, you know, I would kids. be. I, I, you know, <laughs> her contract comes up. You know, so <laughs> we'll see about that. Uh, and I, I, I'm I, I'm concerned about the indie <laughs> the indie film too. So. Uh, but at the bottom at bottom line, Disney's never going to sell Star Wars. They're never going to sell Marvel. They're never going to sell Star Wars. So any rumors you guys hear out there, not true. <laughs> not Tuck them in true. your pocket. Wait until something happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason I don't have 900 videos on my channel about Star Wars being sold. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, and that's the thing, you know, guys, like we have come into this leak culture where like people are putting out rumors are putting out, oh, I heard this, or I heard this, or I heard that. And, you know, the people that ingest that information take it as fact, right? And, and, and it's, 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 you know, people are, the dissemination of information. I never blame the YouTuber, I blame the audience. (laughs) When they say take it with a grain of salt, it means... Take, Take it, it with a, a grain of salt. <laughs> All right. Yep. Exactly. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much to my entire panel. I want to say thank you to Chris, to X, to Sharon, to Vincent, uh, wherever you may be right now, because he's he's at a, at a film premiere, actually. Uh, and mm-hmm. Josephine, Ooh. thank you so much. So I really appreciate I really appreciate I will stay up all night for you. (laughs) Nice shot. (laughs) 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 Well, if she had to leave an uh, everlasting stamp on the stream, right? That's correct. I mean, well, if that's not embodying the the the, the feel and the look of uh, Darth Talon, I don't know what is. That's uh, dramatic exit is just how I leave. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, thanks, guys, everyone. Thank you so much. And just be sure Thank to leave you, Maria. Comments, thanks, Maria. Like this stream. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And make sure you follow all of the folks. Share this here. stream out so people can yes. see it. That's the That's best right. thing you can do. Share it out we so that so other people can see it. We have so much fun doing these. This yeah. is so much fun. That, like, w- there's no negativity. Like, there's no, no none of that. It's just celebrating Star Wars, and I love it. <laughs> so, thank you all. Take care, guys. And we're gonna leave you. Right. We leave you guys with end credits. I mean, we leave you guys with end credits and the wonderful music that Vince Cox puts together, specifically mm-hmm. Emperor Vicious theme. Cool. Yes. Nice.